There is a world as tangible as our own, impossible to see yet unavoidable to sense. A world enveloped by a seemingly unending ocean of forests. Buried deep in that forest, tucked away neatly within a blanket of twilight, lies a quaint little cabin. And in that cabin is a bunch of guys who's a bunch of bullshitter. <coughs> Oops. You ready? Yep. You're a rich girl and the song only in my head. Can you not do it in that voice? Huh? <laughs> Welcome to Sleepy Cast, guys. We've got our nice little crew right here. We've got Oni and Jane. Yeah. We've got Psychic Peppers. Gonna, the case is going to kill me, please. And we've got me, Rice Pirate. Uh, we're here today. We're going to do our little podcast Something a little bit different. We want to change this up a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I actually, I'm just First throwing this out at you guys now. incoming. <laughs> 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 Hi, guys. Was that supposed to be like the air horn? Hi, like, boop, boop. It was like the challenger approaching thing. Hey, Black Knight, <laughs> come on in here. Come on, Durell. Hello. I am the mailman. I oh. deliver the mail every day. Hello. Sometimes Chris spits on me and points and says, non-human, non-human, and I run away. <laughs> What's I ironic don't. is that you're hey, the one please, who actually does that. Please, Durell. Don't don't let Chris be mean to you. Sorry, Durrell. Thank you. Everyone, everyone get a round of applause for Durrell. Chris, you're a racist. Durrell, get out of here. <laughs> I hate that black guy. <laughs> so I want I want to change this shit up a little bit. Um, we had a lot of questions from um our Patreon supporters that we didn't get around to last time, and obviously we're gonna we're gonna tackle them over the course of many episodes. But there are so many right. that I figured that we could actually open this up. I know you guys just came back from a nice. Uh, trip to New York, yes. working hard, working hard. The land of the Big Apple. Yes, the Big Apple land, and um, so I figured we could go over some of these questions just to just to chat. Keep okay. it I'd also, easy. Like, I'd also like to say. Well, I'd probably say what happened to New York. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll do a whole other podcast a on A whole that. one about New York? A whole a different one, not this one. So get your fuck, stop smiling, you idiot. I'd like to say, hey, what a wonderful time today. Oh, this guy's a joke. And everyone's really gay. Now, hold up. <laughs> I fuck my little, brother. You know, this is a comedy podcast, but you know what? You just sometimes... <laughs> today, I'm not even having <laughs> this. What makes it perfect is is the Batman t-shirt <laughs> and then the blanket over your crotch. You cheek fucking uh, fight. It's perfect. I like my blankie. <laughs> He's chocolate milk to a little He's, he's sucking on the it. corner of his blankie. That's uh, cute. Listen, <laughs> everyone needs a blankie. They do. You know what? I actually, I when I was a kid, I had a blankie, but now I have a pillow that I have. It's the only pillow I can sleep on. It's the hentai one. It, it's not the hentai one, but it is what I use. Like, I smell it when I'm jacking off. Really? Oh. Like, I don't know what it is about the smell of it, but I know when, like, sometimes... Maybe your drool, like, smells like hot women. Maybe. It does. I mean, it makes me horny. Either way, that or nice. the my scalp dandruff makes me okay. Uh, so horny. evolution at work. Mick spits on his dick to jerk off, mm -hmm. then he sleeps on his drooly pillow and gets horny. Oh yeah, it's evolution. That's absolutely. I could see that. It's kinda, evolution. Kind of happening. That or my own semen makes me horny because my whole bed is just covered in it. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So <laughs> I just wanted to hit up some of these questions. I figured they'd be good kind of topics that we can roll through. And yes. One of these questions is from. Uh, should I say uh, make, make a wish foundation? Yeah. Uh, What's wrong uh, with that? No, it's fine. I just want to. You want to start with that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, Here you go. Okay. Um, Did I ever tell uh, you about make a wish? Hold on. Can I, I was a make a wish kid. <laughs> yeah. I almost died. I swear. Me. When I was a kid, I was a make a wish kid. <laughs> Were you really? Yeah. I got. How? I got humonia and almost died. What? Chris, are you being serious? Yes. I was making you a wish kid. Pneumonia? Why did you say like that, you psycho? P pneumonia. Pneumonia? Why did you say pneumonia? Pneumonia. That's what they say. In, that's what they say in Ireland. <laughs> so, what? Did you get to see Spider Man? No. Or something? Or they're like, like, if you could wish for anything in the world, what do you wish for? Yeah. And I was like, I want to see Action Man. And they got this normal looking builder in. <laughs> you just got of... some construction worker to walk in and cough on you. Yeah. He was like, hey, I'm Action Man. <laughs> He was like already half drunk. <laughs> I was like, no, you're not. You're no greatest hero of them all. I'm actually lying. Oh, I'm cutting that. I'm keeping. I'm keeping your your make a wish shit. I want to see how good I could act. You were great. Thanks. I believed you. Thank you. But the real first question. Yeah, is, from from the. Sorry for wasting your time. Go from, from make a wish. What does make a wish ask? Uh, he says, "Will my cancer go away?" You know, that's a interesting question. That's not a good wish. What do you think? Um, Look, I'm not a doctor, kid, but <laughs> I talk to the doc. You're gonna die, dude. 
But you know something? At least you have this podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and we, he got his shout out too. Yeah, you got your shout out. Do you so remember his off. name though? Death Boy. No. <laughs> I knew a woman who had cancer and she went to the doctor and he injected medicine into her arm. She got better. Yeah, you know, cancer's a weird <laughs> thing. On it, no. What did he eject, Chris? Medicine. <laughs> what kind? His penis. It was the plus sign. The plus sign? Yeah, the medicine sign. That's HIV positive, Chris. Oh, fuck. The, the, the AIDS key cancels out the cancer. Oh, no. Yeah. That's how they did it. I, that's I think science. that's actually... I think that's a true way of getting rid of something. It is not. It is. No, if, it you, is. Have cancer, if you have cancer and you get AIDS, no, you just have cancer. cancer and AIDS. No, it was cancer. <laughs> I read that. I did. That's the secret no. cure Google to it. HIV get, or cancer is to get HIV. There was something. It's a gamble I'm not willing to take. There, there was a thing where it was You're like... You're just doubling hey, down your bets at this I point. I broke my foot, but I, if I, I think cut someone my head cured, off, it was cancer. Someone either cured AIDS or cancer by injecting something bad into them to cancel it out, and then they cure the other thing, too. Well, with... With cancer, for sure, radioactive treatment yeah. is is already pretty bad. It like destroys your immune system. It f's with your bones. Yeah. I thought if you like walk into Chernobyl, you get more cancer. What? That's true. Or you get superpowers. So do they find a way to make radiation minus cancer? It, healthy radiation. Yeah, healthy. Ba- oh. ba- ba- basically, when you have, if you get cancer, your options are pretty much definitely die of cancer or maybe die of chemotherapy. If that's the case, then why don't they put a big because most people who, who get cancer die of chemotherapy. They don't die of the actual cancer. Really? Yeah. yeah. But, but your options are, like I said, definitely die of cancer or maybe die of chemotherapy. Oh. Yeah. So which one do you choose? I choose the healthy option. Like Steve Jobs. You know what? Actually, you know what's funny about that is that a lot of people do say, like, in order to be uh, to fight cancer, like, they do these holistic things where you just jog more and do yoga yeah. and and listen to Kenny G and, oh, and eat vegetables I think and the issue, shit. I think the issue comes when people try to do that only. Yeah. Like Steve Jobs did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was a moron. But he didn't even do died. that. I thought he just ate apples until he, he died. He literally did. Yeah, he was... <laughs> He's like, I have cancer. Yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. to eat and apples. You're like, Listen, no, dude, are you kidding? No. no that's the act- creator of the Apple computer yes. only ate apples? The, the most saw- ironic death that, that you could have. That is the silliest thing. Is that in order well, to combat to cancer... My, to my knowledge, the doctors, if I fuck up on this... He loved himself so much. No, but, the, uh, but the doctors came to a pretty... like uh, He had pancreatic cancer, which is pretty much a death sentence, but they came early enough to where they were like... We got some treatment options. We could do surgery. We could do treatment options, and he basically said, "Fuck you," and it leaves off the trees. And then he, and he died. And then he took a bite of an apple, and then he set it on the table, yeah. and it was the perfect silhouette exactly. of their logo. By the way, he didn't invent the Apple computer. He would wait. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. I thought he just revolutionized it. No, I think he. I think he did create it. Okay, that's fair. I'm pretty sure he did. I was getting ready Unless for an him on later on. Of, like murdering people, running at me, saying that I got it wrong. Did he make Pixar, or did he just? I, I, think, yeah, I think he had a stake in it. I don't think okay. he made it. All right. So, um, Make-A-Wish, uh, Death Boy, 69, uh, No Scope, got his question asked. Hmm. Now we've got a question from... Oh, here we go. One from Curtis Arnott, a.k.a. Takahata101. Okay. Oh, oh. I'm ca- skip this one. Shut up. I'm that put a bad fucking taste in my mouth. <laughs> Something's just pissed me off, and that's one of them. You know what? Your username is say Psychic his, Pebble. No, say his name again. I want everyone to hear this fucking we asshole's name. We all got shitty username. No, say it again, man. His we, name or his username? His you his username. You know what I... Takahata. <laughs> Zach is the best. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, read the question. <laughs> the question is, best era of music. But we're uh, only given... Hold on. We're only given five options. Okay. So you can't go any far, uh, far just, back then. Yeah, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, or modern. Which, like, you can't guess, say Bach. You can't say anything back in the day. Wait, so, so is, is <clears throat> that, was that, did it go 90s modern or 90s 2000s? Modern? No, 90s and modern. So that, well, modern's like, that's like 15 years, though, from... Well, I'm going to okay, make okay. the assumption that it's hmm. from it's from. All right, we should preface plus. this with... Music is subjective. Of it's course. everyone's taste. Dude, Tumblr isn't watching our podcast. I know. I'm just, just saying just because go. I posted my music playlist to Twitter and people were like, "Fuck you!" You see? No, they didn't. Look, I did. I I was people even a little get bit surprised. furious over musical There's choices. Music snobs, Do they dude. really? People, yeah, furious. I I think I think people even I think the most snobs you get are music snobs. People who don't like your taste of music. Oh, you listen to this? I hate talking to people about music because yeah. I'm always walking on eggshells. Yeah, what about exactly. you? Or do you feel like you have very strong opinions? about no okay. I think like I think music is the most subjective thing out of anything yeah because yeah it's just 
Do you know what music is? It's just like frequencies. Yeah. Some, it's just frequencies you like to hear. Yeah. yeah. So if you like, like whatever instruments you can get to make those frequencies. Like it's so. not like you can walk up to someone and say, "Oh, I fucking hate the bamboo flute." It's like why? I hate the sound of it. Well, yeah. okay, you can't blame them because maybe they don't like it. But then it's like it just depends on what kind of instruments and what kind of genres and shit. There's yeah. no way to say if it's actually good or not. Yeah, and it's also like I think also what you're used to too. I mean, I think subjective is the perfect word mainly because yeah. I mean all art is subjective, but but. I I think what sounds you're used to are the sound. You like know what you'll I mean? never like, get like most of India to like music that's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they love but, that shit. But man, Holy but fuck, no, dude. I'm just saying. Like I'm not saying that's bad. You pissed off our I one Indian viewer. No, but like for them, <laughs> they love that. And you know what? The Chinese opera and shit. Yeah, it's like. Point. Yeah. You know, like they've got like their own like <laughs> fucking. They've got their own thing, and I'm sure there's people sitting back being like, oh, "By the yeah, way, this look, is my there's gotta be one Chinese trying guy to, who like, I wasn't trying to, to like Aerosmith or Zach, something. I wasn't right? trying to be racist. Just hear me out. I was not trying to be racist. Okay. They've got different uh, scales. They've got different ways that music works than we do, and I don't get it. And smaller brains too. You think? Smaller brains, smaller <laughs> faces. <laughs> On smaller heads. <laughs> they're small. They're small humanoids. <laughs> small primates. Any, anyways, but what I'm saying is, yeah, uh, like everything. Like if we grew up there, we'd probably love that shit. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. But it's weird because, like, I, the reason I bring that up is because I listen to older stuff. Yeah. I I, I don't really like a lot of other stuff. And I don't think it's because you. I'm not. I'm not gonna, I get labeled somebody who's like, "What you think music today sucks?" It's like, no, I just like older music. So people attack me for like the older music because they're, think, they're saying I think oh, I do music think today music sucks. today kind of sucks to be honest. I, yeah, like I'm some, sorry, like that I, anaconda ain't got none unless you got buns, hon. That kind of stuff. Or sister like, makes a lot, and I have to enjoy it because he's from Seattle. And every I'm from every Seattle. once in a while, I'm on the radio and like here, look at no, 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 no. I, I meant the Nicki Minaj remake of it. Oh, she made a remake of it. Yeah, where, she, where that's the thing. She just took his music that it was already good, and she made it worse. I think the only thing I would say for music, I think she's a decent hip hop artist, but I don't like it when they do that so much when they take. Other shit. I don't like it's sampling, like, but yeah. wait. Uh, I, th I was about to say. I think music is kind of nostalgic for everybody. Where no, yeah. I disagree though because I I didn't have a taste of music until I was like. Well, that's fine. Seventeen or eighteen, maybe nineteen. Even. I think nostalgia is a part of it, but I do think that like there's a lot of people that later on get into things like yeah. 80s rock or yeah, seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like rock your taste will change though. Yeah, yeah. But absolutely. If, if you hear a song from your childhood, you're not going to go, "I hate this." Oh no, definitely. Like if your dad was whenever, singing songs, you'd be like, yeah. like Whenever yeah. I hear like a shitty, cheesy '90s song, I'm like, oh. Okay. You, and it kind of yeah. makes sense though with music, especially because not only is it accessible, but so many artists today I feel are influenced by past artists. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That if you like something, that there's a very good chance if you backtrace it, you're gonna find like the roots of some oh, of their absolutely. music, and you're gonna be like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is why they got inspired to make shit. Yep. This is what you know it came from. But see, I but I feel like too, like like you said, like it's a nostalgic thing. I, it's a little bit of a nostalgic thing. Like if no, I. Yeah. It's not totally. If I was 50 years old and heard like this Smash Mouth song, I'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? I'm not like, I only heard so much music when I was a kid. Yeah. Right. You have to discover new music too. So to answer the question in the roundabout way, I I personally really like 80s music. I like the way it sounds. It's it's that nice period for me. It's a nice like, transitional period where it's kind of synthy and like that weird techno-y stuff. They got their pads, they got their themes. Yeah, but it's not yeah. too... They got their it's boom, not, like, kiss, stuff, the boom, the boom, It's not that kind of really techno-y kind of yeah. stuff. It's that nice kind of like weird cheesy... I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, I like the aesthetic, but I wasn't. I, I didn't really live through the '80s. I wasn't alive. Yeah, I so, was. <laughs> but so, so I have, the, I have no bias towards. It's I'm like I'm old. I, it's like I was nostalgic for it. Or I just, I, yeah. I grew to like that kind of stuff when I was older. You know, it's kind of funny because I grew up in the '80s, but m one of my favorite generations of music over time because during during the 90s we had like the alternative breakout with like Nirvana and Soundgarden and, and all you know all sorts of shit and that was what I listened to however as I've gotten older I still love a lot of that stuff yeah. but the 70s actually became something that I really got into with like Led Zeppelin yep. uh, and even though the doors are kind of out the door at the time and and listening back I'm not so much into the doors but like there were plenty of bands in the 70s that I feel like influenced that 80s yeah. sound that's the thing too is it's kind of it's obvious it's obviously you say but it's really fun to kind of go back from songs I listen to I, I it extends from like the 60s up until like the 80s or 90s yeah it's fun to just kind of slowly see it progress I've always enjoyed that what would people call Frank Sinatra's music would that be 60s yeah it's uh, hmm. 50, 40s 50s 60s I think you could I mean he was around for so long that it's kind of I guess you, yeah you could, you could people what don't be the heyday of that was 50s probably yeah, yeah. 50s yeah. Okay. yeah that makes sense I just think it's cool that you can find something good in all music yeah 
Yeah. Like, like if you listen to a, like a weird, creepy song from the forest, you can still find something good. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I love, there's a lot of like aboriginal, like tribal stuff that I love. There's a lot yeah. of like, uh, you know what I, you know what I, renaissance you know what I really, music yeah. that I actually enjoy. I've really enjoyed Gregorian th- chants. <laughs> I, for some reason, I don't know why. And I think it's because I've, I don't know if I've grown used to it or whatever, but I watch a lot of documentaries, but for some reason, Soviet music. Is really appealing just because it's a guy. It's, it's really weirdly appealing. <laughs> really, it's a, it's a huge choir of guys singing. I don't know why. This is manly. The, the Red Army Choir. I mean, would you want to be a part of that? Fuck no. I would never want to live there. But I just it's it's really no, no, it's no. fascinating. W- would you like to sing with them? I, there's no way. I can't. I can't sing okay. by myself. There's would no you, way. if you had a choice between yeah. hiring a uh, deaf leopard cover band or a bunch of Russian dudes? To sing at if your I could party. Get, if I could, if I what could, what would you do? I feel like you get way more cool stuff with the second one, with the latter. <laughs> Don't you? You, get, you have with a choir of a fucking manly that's singing. It's true. Okay. With their bellies. <laughs> fucking. What was I gonna say? I was gonna say it's cool that you can have like an artist write a song and it's good, but then someone in the future will make it way better. Yeah. Like Mad World. Like you ever hear the original version of that? Yeah. It's like. Oh, Rana, oh, my, oh, my, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then the new one's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I did to close it up. I don't. I wouldn't. I, I feel like I don't really feel like I can say music today is bad or worse. I don't think I can say that. No. Nah. I I feel like there's always been bad music. I always think there's always been bad movies. I always think there's always yes. been bad literature. But we just were the good stuff. But I would say the only the only thing I would say objectively about music today that could be considered worse is. I feel like 30 or 40 years ago, yeah, there's no way to cheat the system. Right. You could be a bad singer that would still be popular. Yeah. That's the only thing that I and think is different today. And that's why I would say that today more than any other time. I mean, boy bands But it's good though. Well it's good in some way though because pr- anybody could be big. Right. You could be big now. I really don't like that pop music mentality where you'll go into a club and they'll play, be playing all the music that just came out yeah. and then in a month it's just forgotten forever. It's cycled. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's I mean, just that's weird. Always, it's, like, yeah, that's, it's always it's just, kind of It's just kind of culty in a way. It is a little bit. I never thought of it that way. It's weird. But it is like programming. Like, you know, yeah. you listen to it in your car and I'll go to the club, listen to it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like a re it's like a remixed version of it, but it's still the message and it's still the same like basic yeah. principles of the song. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, I would say it's the only big difference today. Yeah, I mean, there's still I I, I mean I, like you were, you're right though. In that, I don't think like, every generation has its pros and its cons. Whenever and I, there's I listen, plenty whenever, of good music coming out now. Whenever too. I listen to, whenever I listen to the radio, there's always I mean, oh, that's a nice song. And I, but you know, but I, I would go out of my way to listen to it. Radio is just so hard though. Radio is yeah. to me, it's like not only is it a, a dying medium to a degree, to a degree. I mean, relatively, it's a shifting it one. I would say yeah, it's yeah, shifting yeah. is something else. It's it's, it's more vague than something. But else. the the radio has a problem. And the, the problem stems from how the model works and where they play shit until you hate it. Yeah. yeah. Like, they'll take a good song and be like, yeah, I like this song. Two days later, okay, shut the fuck up. Like, can I hear yeah. something else, please? I can't drive yet, and I don't have a radio, so I'm, I don't have to deal with that yet. You would. I, Once I, I have, get a car. I have SoundCloud I remember, right into my I car. Driving, I, I'm not going to well, do good. it. When I remember in high school, when I used to, I used to drive to high school... Uh, I, my drive was a little bit longer because we, we had to move out of district or whatever. But we, I still went to that school through some weird loophole. So it was like a 15, 20 minute drive. Every, every day, I would listen to the fucking radio for 20 minutes and I'd hear the same yeah. songs on yeah. every station, which is fine. You know, I, I, think, I think it's like why the TV model doesn't work because on the radio, whatever's there, you have to listen to it even if you don't want to. It's like TV, right. it's like, oh, I can either watch, I can watch garbage until 7 o'clock and wait till my show's on yep. or go to Netflix. Yeah. So, I feel like more people use their cell phones with the auxiliary cable now than, That's exactly than, yeah. than, use, than yeah. use the radio, really. Yeah. You think pop music's more, like, catered towards girls? So girls are more into no, the music? I wouldn't say girls, I would say the younger audience in general. But, like, I don't remember dudes listening to that stuff when I was younger. It's actually really, I'm thinking about it now. <clears throat> in terms of pop music, you think about all the pop stars that are, like, really big right now. You've got, like, people like... What, Maroon talk. Five or Taylor Swift or yeah. or whatever, it does really seem more oriented towards the girls. I would or, say it's like seventy five. I think it's because girls. they realized. I don't know. I feel. I feel like that. That probably changed like the eighties or nineties. Well, here, realized. hold on. That, hold that, on. That was a, that name was, name a pop star today that you think has more of a male fan base. 
I don't know. Is, I don't know. I don't really know what kind of pop stars are. I hate to say it. I don't, I'm not really. Yeah. Because I feel like back when you had like, <clears throat> like Michael Jackson and I was always good Michael Jackson, but, but yeah, I, mean, I feel like there was plenty of guys and yeah. girls that really liked him. But I'm trying to think now. But like a lot of uh, his songs weren't just about like love and like fucking girls. Yeah, I mean, right. they were about love. They were really about. F- I don't know. I feel like it's the core of most songs because that's like the most human thing ever is about love. It's the easiest thing to write about. Which is why it's been written about so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my movies have it too. Almost every movie has a fucking love interest story. Because it's relatable or whatever. You can just easy. You can just do it. Everybody gets that. But it's risky to write a fucking song about a Tupperware. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's hard, it's hard to... <laughs> you same, do same, it. Same thing with movies. You could, you could do a really good song about Tupperware, I'm sure. Or a really good movie about forks. But, you know, you could do something <laughs> weird. But it's hard. It's way harder to do that. It's Brave true. Little Toaster made a good movie. Yeah, there you go. That's true. That's true. So, um, <clears throat> so what do you think, Chris? If you if you had to choose between 60, 70, 80, 90, or modern, what would you choose? I'm the worst person to ask. You ever. have to choose, choose one. Choose one. The guy uh, asked the question, you fucker. Uh, the most, uh, let's see. Appeal to you. Best era. Look, that's the thing, right? I don't listen to <laughs> any of this music. I like, I like game. Pick it. I'm yes, weird. Look, listen to me. I like yeah, game what's your soundtracks. Favorite music? What's your favorite music? I like game soundtracks. I like movie soundtracks. Okay. I like catchy songs. But that's the thing, right? If I was to actually say which is the best, even though I've got no interest, what, I, like, I got interest. Favorite, then? What's your favorite uh, game or movie soundtrack? What 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 decade produced the most interesting best soundtracks? For I like you? the Back to the Future soundtrack. That was eighty five. Okay. Robocop, Robocop also. Robocop was a great soundtrack. That's but, true. Like, it's all eighties too. They're not asking that. Okay, so which, You're which, right. which, no, which okay which uh, decade had the best music? I would say the most. Uh, what's what the word? Timeless. Mm-hmm. Probably the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think a lot of stuff was rooted in that. 70s, 80s, I would say it's a tie. Yeah. Well, you, you, I said 80s before. I, I still think 80s. You, you just threw tie in there, just kind of off the cuff, like. No, I, like I said, I, I think it's hard to do the 60s. And, like, I would prefer music from the 80s, but I, I would say that the 70s. Would, like, the, the 80s definitely has a feel to it. You know what you're listening to. But yeah. a, a song from the 70s, you could go. What well, else depends on genre too? You know what? Fuck it. I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna blame. We're myself. all idiots. That was the whole point. This is the most subjective shit ever. It's true. So. I, Here's another question. Yeah. Uh, this one is from Phil Sutphin. And he, uh, this is actually kind of a long one. I'll try to blaze through it. <gasps> What's it like going to a con as an e celebrity? For example, okay. I remember Chris, mm. the Chris, Oni NG, right here. In this this guy right room, here? This very room. Picking his nose? I remember picking his nose. <laughs> Yeah. In a Batman shirt. Dude. I remember Chris telling a story in a stream about a surreal moment at a con. Oh, yeah. He said that someone in an elevator full of people. I was there. Yeah, Zach was there. Zach was apparently there, shouted, Oni cartoons! Yay! No, no, no. It wasn't like that. No. It was weird. It was weirder than that. It, it was, was way Me and weirder. Zach stepped into the elevator. We, we were You're like... the back of it, though. We were You're... crushed against the back. It was full of, like, 30 people... Like and and the doors closed and then somebody was just like, uh, when is like Chris O'Neill's panel on? And I was like, wait, what? And then someone was like, Only Cartoons, yeah. And then uh, then like two other guys said, Only Cartoons, yeah. And I was just like, what the fuck? And then I stood out of the elevator and me and Zach looked back into the elevator and everyone was looking at me, but no one knew who I was. And then the doors closed and I was like, what the it really fuck? Is it says, yeah, and a bunch of people started saying it as well, as well, but none of them seemed to know that Oni was actually there yeah. with them. It was a really odd experience. I don't know why it was so weird. That sounds very bizarre. Yeah. That sounds like a scene from a movie that is kind of like, you know, the slice of life of, yeah, like, yeah, YouTube yeah. animators yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. It was like that almost. You're like the mall rats of, like, animators. You're in an elevator of people, like, you know, using your catchphrase, and then you stand in front of all of them, and not a single one of them even knows who the fuck you are. What I think might have happened was I stepped in, and some guy might have been like, was that... Blah, blah, nah, never mind. But then he asked the question, you know? Right. But, so the question is, what's like going to a convention? Yeah. Oh, uh... It's, you know, for people like Chris and I, it's not really a big deal. We don't really get... I preferred it, like, a few years ago when it was fresh. And also, we were a little, we were a little bit smaller back then, uh, so it was a little less overwhelming. Yeah. When you see the actual, like, the actual internet celebrities, like, yeah. dealing with people, oh my god. I remember, uh, you know... 
like the face people. Yeah, like like John. Yeah. John Tron. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard whenever, to talk whenever about. Whenever we go to convention with him, good lord, is he so? What, what's really creepy? What's this is incredibly unsettling to me. <laughs> it says fucking shivers on my spine. People dressed up as John. The last <laughs> oh. place I went to, and so I was, but I kept I kept oh, thinking I was like, hey, with John, and he was like, we turned around, it was just some fat lesbian. I was like, oh god. I'm not John. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe it was John. No, it wasn't John. It was not a fat lesbian. <laughs> But um, I was gonna go to not yet. But anyways, but I was like, what the fuck? And it happened like four times. <laughs> and it kept irritating. Like, the more it happened, like, the there more were it got four irritated. lesbians dressed as John Tron. There's probably two lesbians and two oh, just fat guys. Okay. There's like a weird, sad truth to it where you you want people to come to your panel. Because, like, that that's why you go, is for yeah. to see people at your panel. But then if someone comes up to you at any time other than your panel, you're, you're like, you should have come to the panel. Yeah. yeah. But but then, pe- like, and if there's people stopping you for a photo every minute, it's kind of annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, wanna, I, I, like, I feel I, like in a perfect world where you had all the time in the world and you had nothing to do, yeah. it would be great to, like, take photos and sign autographs, have a five-minute chat with everybody. You I know, would, like, it would be great. But I could imagine that once it happens too much, it's just like... Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I, no, I, no. I, well, Chris, Chris I, I've I, gotten to the point where if I continue to do what I do, it, it will get to the point where it, like it's going to be annoying, you know? Right. But what's funny, though, is from the other perspective, none of the or not none, but a lot of these people don't know what that experience is. So for them, every time they meet you, it is yeah, the first time. Yeah, yeah. It is like so fresh for them. For you, it's like, dude. And it's not like you I can't relate. So, well, right. I, could, I think when you say annoying, it's not like annoying that they're approaching you. It's no, just no, no, like, no, 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 no. It's great. No, it's awesome that they're they're approaching you. Yeah. But it's annoying when they stop you when you're in the middle of something or if you're eating I, dinner I, I or something. I think the eating is, is a Or if thing. they're like, give me a picture. And you're like, dude, I look like shit. I've been walking around for that's, like that's six the one, hours. That's the one aspect. I mean, it's probably sounds weird to you outside perspective because we're just... Uh, it's, it's also hard to not sound like a douche from talking about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, no. We're not, we're not celebrities. We're just, real about it. Some people notice who we are sometimes. Yeah. And luckily, not me that much. But I'm kind of yeah, it's like, oh, I remember John, we were in New York, and John, John got seriously recognized multiple times a day. Yeah. And it's like he, he the guy couldn't just go out and get a, a, a carton of milk or something or go get a water until he couldn't walk in his, bo- you know, not boxers, but his fucking pajama pants. Yeah. He had, to look, he had to look picture quality every time he went out. And it's like, dude, that's... Because that, of that. Because, because people yeah. would snap a... If, if, by the if, way... If you didn't consent to a photo, they'd take it anyway. Yeah, that, he had to, worst. like... He had to put Jock on his fucking shoulder every day, walk around the city. He had to walk to his theme tune. He had to carry a boombox. It was yeah. fucked up. <laughs> Wait, what? No, it's boom- not. Oh. It's not true. Oh, okay, I was like the boombox. <laughs> 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 With like sunglasses <laughs> on. Yeah, but but I mean, from my perspective, too, I've said it before uh, on the podcast. I've said it before, just other places. I I don't like those encounters. Not because I don't like the encounters of songs, but I don't like what's behind them. I, I hate the idea of celebrity, like of, of celebrities and being a celebrity. I'm not a celebrity, but saying I hate the idea of it. Yeah, it, it I really, really, really don't like the idea of pictures. I don't like the idea of autographs because it, 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 it then it's me confirming that I'm that I'm worth an autograph or a picture. Yeah, but that's to, my perspective. To people, it's, okay, so there's celebrity culture, and then there's just someone who genuinely like looks up to you as an I, artist. I, I I I get that, but I I guess I have a weird skewed perspective because if I saw like Larry David or somebody, I would never like be like, hey, can I, I've never asked anybody for a picture ever. Right. And that's just me. If I ever met somebody I like, I'd be like, "Oh, I, I try to treat them like a person." Even 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 if my heart was beating, I was like, "Oh God, is this person?" Yeah. And that's just a human reaction. I would still. But that's, that's just me. Well, we I, were I, hanging out at Magfest together a lot, and 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 a couple of them. And I'm curious now that you mentioned it, because I know like your thing with photos. Were you uh, asked to get photos a lot? Uh, a couple people asked me before, and, and I. And then I, what did you say? I, I said I'm sorry. I really like doing that. I but I I can do anything else for you. I can. Suck, suck your dick. Like, yeah, I can suck your <laughs> We're balls. We're not original, Mick. Me and you. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I, 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 I just, I don't, I don't like the idea of that. Because it, it then confirms that I, that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm worth an autograph. Or I'm worth a fucking picture. I, it, it, but see, I, do it, you it, think it's fair for you to make that judgment for them now? Because what you're doing in that in that moment, though. What, I, what, I, what, I, no, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to deprive anybody of, of anything. I'm just saying, you got the wrong idea. Your, your image of me is not what you think it is. You feel like, guilty, kind of? But you can't I feel tell guilty. Somebody. If I sat down with lunch with somebody and, and they'd expect me to be off the walls, I'd be like, yeah, so I was well, listening to NPR earlier. In the, the, you know, expectation like, is different than what people feel when they... when they. I, I, I get, look, I, my perspective is I, if people if people like my work, that's great. 
That's what I want. Right. I want people to appreciate my work. But the guy behind it is a boring fucking guy. Don't don't yeah. don't do the thing. No, well, I'm, I'm an average guy, and I say that seriously. And I know it's obvious, but people really really think I'm off the walls, and I'm. It's like no, I'm a fucking boring. But what if they want your boring, autograph boring, because of the body of work you've done and the joy you've brought to great. them, and not because you're no, some but crazy people, off some the people, guy. people do it because they idolize. The I understand. There, there's like another like aspect to it where I get really like guilty feeling when someone comes up to me. And says I'm a really huge fan of this cartoon that I personally hate it now because I, like I, do you ever make a cartoon you grow so far from it you're like I fucking hate this I hated dot 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 about a month after I made it right so when people it was come like, up to you and say it was literally what Tom Folk would introduce me to people as he was like <laughs> this is the dot dot yeah. dot guy and so, I was like Tom so if people come up to you and say I love dot 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 you're like <sighs> yeah that was the first thing John said to me yeah. at Netflix <laughs> yeah. he was like oh oh man yeah you made dot 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 I love dot 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 so you, just like, you just oh, feel God. bad kind of you feel kind of guilty because You've grown out of it, and you're like, you, you can't escape it, you know? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like that people go, like, what are you trying to hide? It's like, I'm not trying to hide anything. Yeah. I, 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 I've already been out there. People know my full name. It's like I'm trying to hide anything. I just, I don't like the idea of it. I don't like the idea because I'm not fucking, it's not even that I'm not worthy, but I'm not. But it's like, I just, I think it's pointless. If you want to appreciate anything, if you want to say anything, do it about my work. But I, like I am not a celebrity. I'm not a goofy, off-the-wall guy. What I make is what I want to be out there. I don't want to be the spotlight because I don't deserve to be I spotlight. Understand. But do you feel like you've put... Fine. It, put, I think that there is a distinction, though, between those people who feel like they're celebrity, therefore they propagate that image and, they, and they promote it. But I, but I do think, yeah. as far as the effort that has gone into avoiding that... It's not effort. It, it's, 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 no, it's the opposite. It's a lack of effort to do the to do the other thing. I've never made an effort not to do that. I've made an effort to not. Basically, what I'm saying is I've 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 never made an effort to not put myself out there. I just never put an effort to put myself out there. It's okay. a lack of effort. Okay. A lot of people will go. I want to be that face. So people walk down the street. And they go. Oh, it's you. Right. I don't want a face to my thing. I want my work. Everything should be different. I'm a guy who practiced something, and maybe I'll get better at it someday but then that's it I practice that it's all that's all it is I just do stuff and I'm not I'm not purposely being humble I really 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 hate the idea of idolizing the people behind the work I really don't like it so it's not about you putting an effort not to put yourself out right, there right I'm not, I'm not consciously going Ugh. right so like if a camera was on you yeah it's not like you wouldn't uh, I'm not take the effort to walk away from the camera or put like a mask on I'm not gonna or... scream it away I, I went to a panel for God's sake that's it's like, true I was like oh yeah I feel like doing it it's one of those well you went to one of them yeah but I also go back if I see that at all <laughs> but uh, I was gonna say, uh, so. I mean, am, I, am I the wrong thing? What do you guys no, think? No, I, I don't think you're wrong. I, I do no. think that you do. Put that's a my bit perspective. Of effort into. I don't know if you put yourself out there, people like you more for doing it for a reason. I don't know. That's, that's, like that's, what I, that's the other reason I don't like it. I've been to so many fucking parties where someone like ignores me, like these snobby Hollywood fucking. Okay, that's, that's a good. That's listen, a good listen, point. But you know what? They ignore this, you because they don't know you look like Zach. Exactly, because, exactly, because you exactly. keep hiding what you look like. You that's know my point. Barbara Streisand effect. Zach's saying that you can see the true person if they don't know who you are first. This is my point. I've been to so many places. Is where I've been a circle of people talking and they're like, yeah, I was, I would do this. And I'm just sitting there like, I say something, you know, they're like, they look at me, look away. And after like an hour of the conversation, somebody walks over like, oh, this is, uh, you know, he did this and this. And immediately these ass kissers. That's why I don't like it. It makes everyone see, I, I want people to see me who, I want to be a regular person right. who's treated like a real person. Yep. I hate the fucking thing of like, Oh, you made this? You get these leeches, these fucking bottom feeders. Yeah. I hate that. So yeah. here, here's a, a, an interesting How are people parallel. How you right because I being a fucking so, human so being? An interesting parallel is when I was 15, mm. I was very overweight. I was very overweight for the for my entire youth. And then uh, I, I, over a course of a summer, I did a lot of unhealthy things. And I lost a con like a, a stupid amount of weight. I went to the hospital because my immune system basically shut down. And they fed me intravenously through my knuckle for about a week and a half, um, and uh, I lost a ton, a ton of weight. And then when I was in the hospital, I lost even more weight because I was just being fed like NaCl. What is it? Sodium Gatorade. <laughs> Gatorade. They're just feeding me fucking Gatorade. Um, but then when I got out. Yeah. Um, because this was an international school. This was in Malaysia. There, there, there wasn't a whole lot of people. It was a pretty small circle of people. Yeah. But the exact same people that I remember making fun of me while I was drawing in my sketchbook, I had headphones on, but I was switching tracks, like, you know, bouncing through tracks. So there was a dead space in my tracks. 
I could hear them talking about me, like yeah. while I was. And these were my quote unquote friends. Like these were the people. But I mean, they oh, were. And it wasn't friendly banter. It you, was, were the, you were the fat kid, so fuck I was. Me. I was like, yeah, I was the fat kid of the group, I guess. So they always needed like a, a thing, I guess. But I didn't know that was the case because I never heard it to my face. Yeah. You know, you always kind of felt things. So, anyways, um, but I got back, and uh, after a number of unhealthy choices. I had lost a lot of weight, and you know, this is when you're 16, so like, you know, 16, 15 period where your puberty is really hitting. So you grow and you change. You got a big dick. Quickly. I have a big dick, so that helps. Yeah. Okay, wait, <laughs> never mind. Go. So, anyways, what ended up happening was all of them all of a sudden liked me. Yeah. I was a sophomore, I dated a, um, a senior, and all of a sudden, like within several groups, I was in a heavy metal band all of a sudden. I was like, um, I was the lead of a couple of like plays and things that we did. My circle of friends was awesome. I, I did really like them. In retrospect, they were great people. However, there were so many people that I wanted to be my friend that I realized after I'd lost the weight, they wanted to be my friend. I hated everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't trust anybody. Yeah. Then I went to Japan after Malaysia. Hated everybody. Well, Anyone who liked Japanese. me. Well, that too, well, no, a lot of more international. And when I went back to Seattle after that, hated everybody. And I, when I say hate, it, it, that's a bad word. It was I was always suspicious. I could never look at anyone and think, you actually like me. Because because of the transition and how quickly it happened, I distrusted everyone. Because I was like, if you saw me two years ago, you if you, you saw me three years ago, yeah. you would be fucking making fun of me right now. Yep. You would not be my friend. Right, that I, feels- saw, I dated girls, that's what I thought. I went out to parties with people, that's what I thought. I was invited to shit, that's what I thought. Yep. I had this disdain for everybody. That's actually a big reason why I'm like, as nice, quote unquote, as I am, I, at least I try to be positive and, and everything, is because I spent a huge chunk of my life, uh, be, like the most, I, you know, like as far as like parties and friends and all that between 15 and 22, you know, that's like kind of like a big, like high school to college kind of party time. Yeah where I just looked at everybody with this second eye or this third eye of just staying. Second eye. Because <laughs> my eyes are so small, they only count as half. half. So yeah. you have to combine them to create one. So my second eye. Um, but yeah, so when you were saying that about going to a party and hearing what people that, think that about That feeling, you, that feeling in your stomach, that fucking fire yeah. you feel when you're like, you, I, I know you're disingenuous and you're a fucking snake. That is, I've experienced it several times where people flat out ignore me. At, at these parties of, or part, not part, fucking parties, yeah. where people congregate, of like, you know, other quote unquote e celebrities, maybe even higher up people than that, and you just get them, and it's like, oh, what did you do? And you get this snobby fucking dead look in the eyes, and you really have to be like, I mean, this, and they're like, oh, 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 and immediately these fucking worms, just, I don't know, it really makes me sick. Yeah. So that's another reason, too. It's like let's let's see if you really are. I think it's so much more exciting to like become friends with somebody like over drinks and stuff. And then while you're talking, then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, and I do this thing. You're like, oh, what did you do? And they're like, oh yeah, they drop a name of a project. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, exactly. And that's you guys fine. are already hitting it off. That's and it's fine. like, oh, that's, that's awesome. fine. Yeah. Look, I've met people who have been like that with. Where I, where Most of with... you guys are, have been that. That I've I, I've met people who've been great who didn't know who I was and treated me nicely. And then I told them who you know we exchanged. Oh, you, oh, you did this. Yeah, that's cool. That's good, but I'm saying I've experienced so many times. I seriously remember one instance where I was flat out ignored in a group of yeah, talking. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, and they were just like these snobs because they were talking about pitching shows. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I did that, so like, I'll, I'll, I'll pitch in my Throw two cents. Throw your two cents in. Yeah, and I, and I think I had, I think I had more than two cents in the yeah. situation because what they they haven't pitched, they hadn't pitched yet. So I was like, oh, this is my experience. And they're like, oh yeah, and then. Uh, one of the people, the, the host of the party, walked yeah. over and was like, Oh, yeah, this is Zach. He made uh, Hellbenders and this yeah. and that. And, oh, you made no. And I was like, I never felt more dirty than that time. Yeah. And immediately they, they all focused. Good day, sir. While we're on the subject of this question, <laughs> yeah. can I just say one thing? Because yeah, I didn't course. get a chance to earlier. Is You know what I was saying? That if you, like, like you know, you reach a certain point of internet celebrityism mm-hmm. where yeah. people will come up to you. I didn't mean to say it like it's annoying if you do that. It, it's just it depends on the situation, I guess. Like so, say John, for instance. I think the interaction is important. The, the, the so, yeah. for example, we saw two guys who stopped and were like, "Hey, can I get a picture with you?" And that that, that stuff is fine. But the one guy at the coffee shop, it was the coolest interaction I'd ever seen in my life. Guy at the coffee shop, we were leaving. And John, the guy was like, "Oh, hey, John, I saw your bumper video. Great stuff." And he shook his hand. And he, that was he's like, "Thanks." Yeah, and he, he was cool. Away. That was it. I was yeah. like, "That guy is fucking cool." And I remember that guy way more than anybody else. Yeah. Because, I mean, I would just say this: if you see somebody you look up to. Just remember, they probably get stopped every day, multiple times a day, and just be 
conscious of that. Just appreciate that. It, they're not being they're not being dicks because imagine imagine you trying to go imagine you imagine all the stress everybody listening has right now in their head. Oh, I have to go to work. I have to pay this bill. I have to go. Oh, this coworker's being a dick. Oh man, my my dad has cancer. Whatever. And imagine you're being stopped constantly. You you, you have to be. It's, I didn't it's expect flattering. you to talk about John's it's, dad's cancer. It's, <laughs> that was a slip. one week. One week. No, but seriously. <laughs> so I had to say. It's it's Wait, unappreciated. Wait, John's dad doesn't have cancer. Go on. It's it's not it's not. I wouldn't right. say it's pestering. I would just say be conscious of what that person's going with. Everything in their head they're dealing with, plus you interacting with them. Yeah. And it's not to say they're annoyed by you or they don't appreciate yeah, it. I, I didn't mean to say it like that. No, 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 I, no I mean, and I think actually what Chris was saying is kind of right though. As far as like, yeah. it's not. Yeah. It, you know, like as far as like the whole annoying thing, I do think it's not so much annoyance. It's just more about what's a tactful way sure. to approach exactly. people. Exactly. If yeah. you if you want to interact with somebody that you like, it's fine. But if they're eating and you walk up where they have spaghetti, in the or they're taking like, a piss, or they're I yeah, mean, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a, be appropriate. I would say that's the only thing I would say. Yeah. I've been situations where somebody's been eating. I think that's the one thing you should bother somebody. Yeah, that's just fucking eating, bullshit. Don't bother somebody. Yeah. Wait until they pay the bill or something. On the way out, say, "Hey, I like your work," and shake their hand. That's yeah. it. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. And in New York, there was uh, occasionally you'll see celebrities walking around, and that was always kind of my thing too. I was never an autograph guy, but yeah, if yeah. I ever saw them, if I saw them in the corner, and I knew it was them, <laughs> and like they'll make like you know they're trying not to make eye contact, but as soon as they kind of do, kind of, I'm you like, know? oh shit! So I just be like, Hi. love your stuff. Yep. That, yeah. No, exactly. I, 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 in the back of my head, I was like, if I ever, if I ever anybody ever looked up to, was gonna say, you know, hey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good work. I mean, I've always liked people coming up to me. Like, yeah, it's always, it's always it's like, it's cool. It's, it's just always the like, way okay. it happens that kind of yeah. shows what. You it's know. not, it's yeah. not the act of you approaching. It's how that's handled. Yeah. Right. That's all. That's all I would say yeah. to clarify all of it. Yeah. So anyway, good question. Yes. Yeah. Um. Next, we've got Ben Van Camp. He asks. I'm very curious about what your answers are going to be. You might have to think about it. Mm-hmm. What's the worst gift? You've ever gotten? Oh my god! I, I know it off the bat. Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, actually, shit. He said the worst gifts you've ever given. Oh. I want to know. Well, let's do both. Let's do both. I'm curious. Okay, given. worst gift I ever got from my aunt on Christmas Day from my dad's pound shop that he owns. <laughs> it was a one pound toy from my dad's pound How shop. How old are you? <laughs> like what? I don't know. Six. Oh wait. She was working there, so she got it for free. And they gave it to you, even though you probably had all of them if you I, even wanted them. I, don't I mean, know I, didn't, I didn't want it because it was like from a pound shop. <laughs> I know the, my dad owned. I know the worst gift I ever gave. <laughs> I was like seven or eight, and I stole my dad's six pack out of the fridge, like two months before his birthday. How old are you? Like seven, probably seven ish or seven. Zach, eight. shouldn't have done that. No, no, listen, listen. I stole Zach, the six. I stole the six pack. That. Fuck you. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Fuck you. I sold the six pack and then wrapped it up and like two months later I gave it back to him. He was like, Oh, I was wondering where this went. And it was fun. For that point it was fucking moldy. I was an idiot. It was like, My dad brat. likes beer. I'll just give him his own beer. It's a better gift than that. <laughs> of course you'd suspect his fucking seven year old son would take it. Oh my goodness. So, what, what was the worst gift you ever got? I you know, I I, I it sounds like a lie, but I don't think I've really ever gotten a bad gift before. I mean obviously it's like whenever you go to your to your family's house or something they give you like socks when you're a kid it's always kind of yeah. late but that's what everybody gets I don't know I don't know I guess it's all pass I don't have a good answer yeah um hmm I don't know pass no oh, alright fine come on. we'll yeah. just assume that the truth is just so dark that it can't be shown into the light of day. So look, I gave someone eyes. I oh no. Um, oh no. So as far as the worst gift I ever got, um, I don't know if it's the. I'm pretty thankful for everything I've gotten. I guess the worst one was um, somebody got me when I was a kid. So when I was seven years, I I never met my. I met my dad once yeah. when I was a kid. When I was seven years old, um, but he left when I was like one years old. And I guess I got two worst gifts, and they were actually both from him. And this isn't like a vindictive thing. I actually couldn't give a fuck about him. I I, I don't know where he is. I don't know what's up with him or anything. How old would he be now? <clears throat> he's alive. Probably, yeah, oh yeah, he's definitely alive. Um, I'm pretty sure he's alive. He'd be about the same age as my mom. They met in they met in high school, I think, in Taiwan. Yeah, they were a young couple. Anyways, so. I got, I was seven years old, hmm. and my my biological father stopped by. He already had a new daughter, 
oh. Ashley, who was like just a few years younger than me. We went out. I think we went to Seattle Center. I can't remember the day very well. And he brought his other woman or wife or whatever she was at the time. And when we got back, he it was for my birthday. And then when he got when we got back, he gave me a present. And it was Trivial Pursuit. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar. Every seven-year-old's yeah. dream. First of all, I can barely fucking read. <laughs> Let alone play Trivial Pursuit, which was given to me in the early 80s. Now, you got to remember, Trivial Pursuit's based on, like, factual information throughout... So I don't know who the prime minister of the of the you know previous Soviet Union yeah. is. I don't know who the World Series uh, top batting average guy was in 1964. I bet, fucking, I bet you he fucking dug through his closet and found it. Was that like, yeah, it was like a regift. Yeah, that's that was a happened. fucking regift. That's exactly what happened. But there was like I could barely <laughs> read. I remember honestly, as far as Trivial Pursuit, what I did with that mostly was chew on the pieces because there was like the little like little pie <laughs> pieces. Sweet. I would chew on the little the little pie piece things. Cool. So your dad gave you the gift of always choking. Yeah. <laughs> I never even thought of it that way. Yeah, and then when I was 11, I got another gift from him, which was a $20 check, which ended up bouncing. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> What the so the f- so $20 check, that alone is a red flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the fact that it bounced, that was zero. His parents' well, check it's the is a gift. I know. So the, it was a check, too. Know. It was because he knew he didn't have any fucking money. Yeah. So he'd do the check just as like a, a like a oh, I got $20. But yeah. not really. Um, as far as the worst gift I gave, God, I, I the, no, no gift comes to mind is like, wow, this was a terrible gift. Yeah, um, that's a hard one to answer. Yeah. I'm sure I've given terrible gifts. I mean, uh, that, that gifts. kind of applies that you'd have to go out of your way to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the idea being that you knew that you... You couldn't do any better. Yeah, you gave... You straight up just didn't do better. You really failed in that department. I can't really think of much. I don't know. I guess the worst gift is, like, forgetting someone's birthday. I've done that. Yeah. Well, one time for <laughs> Christmas when I was, like... I was old enough. I was, like, 15 or 16. Uh, this isn't really... It's a good gift and a bad gift. Uh... My family used to do, uh, they still do, they used to do Christmases, like, at my grandma's house, yeah. so, like, 20, 30 people, or whatever, and I had, like, 40 or 50 bucks in my, in my, to my name, so I went to the Dollar Tree, and I bought everybody a $1 gift, Yeah. which is a nice gesture, I think, yeah, but it's yeah. also a $1 gift, so yeah. nobody, not one person was ever super stoked, it was, like, 30 people who were very underwhelmed. <laughs> oh, a spatula, thank you. I actually, while we were talking, I... This wasn't like a birthday gift, but it was a thing I gave someone. Um, wow, it's honest hour. When I was uh, 14, this is right after I, I was right around when I first got to Malaysia. There was a girl, I think her name was Lauren. I don't remember her last name. She lived down the street from me and uh, I had a really big crush on her. And I don't know what I was thinking but I ended up taking one of the vases that we had. It wasn't a big one. It was kind of small. Hmm. And I remember going to her house and telling her that it was my great grandma's. Oh. And that I wanted her to have it. Oh. Good Lord. And, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not a whole lot happened, obviously. Uh, you're up there, you're up, up there with the rapists and murderers. I, I don't know. I just wanted I wanted to believe I, I wanted I wanted to give her something that I I thought she would think was important. But in retrospect, I just think about how cringy and like how she probably awkward didn't buy bullshit either. She was like, oh, it's she probably I've seen this before. Yeah, I mean, what did she even do with it? In, in, like, she's the fucking garbage. threw the trash. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, that was it was a different time. Obviously, I'm young and stupid, <laughs> trying. If trying I ever get really a vase from you, I'll know where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you it's from my great grandma, you know where it's really from. <laughs> Fucking Target. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's the that's the worst and best I've done. All right, so there there are a couple more questions we've got here, but I actually we were talking about this a little bit earlier, and I just wanted to recap a little bit on um, yes. on your guys's adventure at the zoo. Yes. So you guys were talking about the Philadelphia Zoo. And I how went. It, I went to the zoo. And how it's really poo. I yes. did. 
Not Chris, Zach. Chris went to the zoo. I, I, I excluded Zach because Zach is a dickhead. I stayed here in the attic and played with models. You're banned at, from the zoo after the looked out of the city the from, from the attic and wish I could I went with my parents there. when they visited. Yeah. So what and do you want to know? I want to know why you thought it, it stunk so much. Like, okay. you, you were talking about, like, the animals and stuff. Okay, so, uh, backstory. I went to Dublin Zoo when I was 17. Yeah. What did you think of the zoo then? Exactly, right? So I went to Dublin Zoo in Ireland, where usually, I'm, I'm sorry to be mean, usually stuff in Ireland is not as good as stuff in America sure. because there's more people here and it's, it, shit gets done faster. I don't know. Oh, everything's, okay. everything's more... <laughs> What do you call it? Better? <laughs> I guess, I mean... Diverse. What's technologically advanced? Uh, you're saying Irish have, have a, Irish have fucking flatheads and Neanderthalic brows, is what you're saying. It's not what I'm saying! <laughs> I'm saying I'm that America gets shit first, usually, so America's usually ahead a bit. Okay. So, when I went to Irish Zoo in Dublin when I was 17, I walked around, I saw... Uh, silverback gorillas in a fucking ten foot room, right. yeah. looking like they were gonna blow their brains out. The second I got a gun, I saw uh, giraffes. <laughs> the monkeys just like staring at you, like. <laughs> have you ever seen? Hey, look, no, the I'm kill me. Kill me now. Have you ever seen the video of the gorilla walking on his back legs? It's the scariest fucking thing ever. Yeah, that was me in a suit, but um, <laughs> we we were in Dublin suit. The gorillas wanted to kill themselves. Everything wanted to kill themselves. Yep. I've never seen a more depressing atmosphere in my life, and it didn't help that it was Ireland. So the day was gray. So yeah. everything was bad. But I recently talked to my mom and she said that Dublin Zoo is really good now. But anyways, oh yeah, so she had just gone to Dublin Zoo a few weeks ago. So she was on a zoo kick. Uh, like Yeah, pretty much. She went to Dublin Zoo with my little cousin. They, they said they had a great time. And then we went to Philadelphia Zoo and it was worse than Dublin Zoo somehow. Did she admit that it was worse? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was fucking tiny we walked around the entire zoo within like half an hour yeah all I, half the animals weren't out even though it was like the nicest most it wasn't too hot were you there at the time there was a dead monkey yeah he fucking what? he fucking fell a monkey, backwards a monkey was like a monkey was like on top of the tree and was like screaming yeah, everyone, was like, <laughs> everyone was screaming at it he was throwing coconuts at all the fucking no, 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 park no, people he was like he had his arms back against the wall on top and he was breathing really heavily looking down and his eyes were bulged and the monkeys were pointing laughing at him he fucking jumped and he fucking splat. Yeah, he you fucking cracked his skull open, and then his his head hung back, looking towards the people, and his mouth yeah. was open, yeah. and it was flies. <laughs> it was awful. It was horrible. But what I'm saying, sorry, what I'm saying is, uh, Philadelphia Zoo, the, half the animals weren't out. The, their enclosures were even somehow smaller than Dublin Zoo. Uh, but I'm not saying Dublin Zoo is bad anymore. I'm saying when I went, it was fucking shit. Yeah. I would say Philadelphia Zoo is shit. It's also super expensive when you go in there too. Is yeah, it? it was really expensive, uh, and all the animals that I saw didn't look happy. It's weird, like because I've always thought there's something really fucked up about having the really kind of like self-aware animals there. Yeah. Like well, you can kind of get away with it if there's a stupid fucking lizard walking around, yeah. but like. <laughs> If, if there's if there's like a monkey with like a human sad eyes like Ooh. yeah that yeah. makes me sick you're like I oh my god he's, he knows he's in they're a like, giant they, they have like their hole. hands like their palms on the glass wall yeah they're, they're too trying to, to be make there. contact they're with definitely you, like, depressed let they me know. out it yeah, was really know, like, fucking weird do you remember when we went there we saw the orangutan sitting out in the grass yes you know do you remember that right yeah, yeah they yeah. look sad except they, they had the biggest enclosure at the time right I went back there with my mom and dad and now there's like ducks there. Oh no! They, like, they, they, they gave they, these weird, stupid animals like ducks and fucking like all these shitty animals the biggest enclosures, and they gave the big animals the smallest enclosures. It was yeah. weird. I I I I think it's you should be able to have monkeys trapped in a fucking. So I'm curious. And about, I don't think I'm not the kind of guy who breaks into fucking labs and like. No, I know. Scale, but yeah. Zach, tell us the story about your dad looking at the gorilla. Oh yeah, every a lot of gorilla. You know, you're the, you're not supposed to look at gorillas in the eyes because there's you know. And oh, the challenge. It looks like, yeah, yeah the challenge. There's a big sign of where the Zuzu went to that said, like, don't the girl in the eyes. And being my dad, what does my dad do? He of looks course. the girls in the eyes, he stares at them. <laughs> yeah. And they're all going, they're going, hoo, hoo. And my dad, my dad went, ooh. And looked at the eyes and made his eyes bigger. Oh, and the girl, it was one of the scariest things ever. The girls started screaming, picked up a huge, a huge fucking branch and threw it at the glass. <laughs> my dad never did that again. <laughs> It was one of the scariest things ever. The, the look in the gorilla's eyes was like, oh, he looked like a fucking serial killer. It was the scariest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, he did that. I was like, I was like, Dad, don't do that. He's like, we fine. It's funny. Trust me. <laughs> I'm curious at this stage where we are. I, I'm I'm wondering if in the near future we'll have zoos of like 
hybrid experiment animals. That'd be cool. Because we've already seen, like, you know what? I don't think zoos are going to be around for much longer. I feel, I feel like eventually... I really don't think they're a good idea. Like, I, I like the idea of preserving some, like, endangered species and shit, but... Just, I don't know. Something just doesn't seem right. It doesn't right. feel like it's preserving in yeah. some ways, though. Yeah, no, when, when, when you're keeping like, an animal in a fucking room its entire life, it's kind of fucked up. Yeah. It's like putting someone on life support. Like, they're not really alive. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, you're sure they're hard speedy, but they're just fucking... I mean, yeah. you, if you look at the monkeys, you really see the pressure. There is. And some zoos would ever have big things where the monkeys Man, get to scream and Gorillas are, are my favorite animal, and when I see a depressed gorilla, it makes me fucking pissed off. <laughs> you just have to have, like, that really positive gorilla in there that's <laughs> like, laugh Guys, it's not as bad as you think. Things, yeah. Hey, we got food, we got a place to stay, we don't have to be... That gorilla dies there's no fast. poachers yeah, coming when, after us. Come on, guys, when you see up. When you see a zookeeper walk Walk into a gorilla enclosure with a big machete and start hacking off a gorilla's arms. <laughs> that dude, makes there, me there sick, was one dude. Where was, dude, I saw one that was really fucked up. I saw a gorilla smiling. Like, I started throwing peanuts at it. He started smiling, laughing, and clapping. And the zookeeper ran with a stick and started beating her in the head. What? Because he wasn't allowed to smile. The gorilla couldn't smile. <laughs> he wasn't allowed to smile. <laughs> and then he took the peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> he threw them to the alligators. Do you, you know, have you ever been to a, have you ever been to a medium? What? A medium? Yeah, and they're like, I'm gonna read your hand now. Oh, like read a palm reader. Yeah, one time I saw a medium in a gorilla enclosure because the gorilla was depressed. He wanted to know what was going on. She was like, <laughs> like rip the medium's <laughs> arm off. She looked at his lifeline on his hand. Okay. And she she looked at him in, in his big gorilla eyes. <laughs> She said, I see death, and he went, ah! He fucking he grabbed her head and ripped yeah. it off and threw it at the glass. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you grilling so funny? Because they're so close to us. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think monkeys, oh my god, we had this. We, they're just deformed this, people. Yeah, yeah. Should, should, we save, should we save this for the New York one? But we had, Chris and John and I, when we were in New York, we had this fucking running joke the whole time. It was fucking slaying us. <laughs> Just do it. Man. Yeah, you can always come back to I, it. I think, okay, I, I think I think I hit upon one of the funniest things ever. Yeah. Foreign people in distress, foreign accents in horrible distress. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, like, I was doing it yesterday, I was talking about an Indian man, like, watching his son be killed in the, the goat the goat attack, okay. and I was, I was, like, making myself laugh, but, like, we were, we were doing this, we were doing this, we were doing this thing where it was, like, a, like a man from Africa, and it was like the whole the whole joke we did it like over and over. Okay, so the story is always this is always the joke is there's a distressed African man in the jungle <laughs> recounting a story of a monkey that walks into the village. <laughs> He, he recounts of how they killed the monkey and why. So it's like, one, one was like, and one day I am in my village, a monkey come from the woods, he walk like that. I see the monkey, I beat him with a stick. His brain come out, the monkey never come back. We kept, we kept doing it, but we kept changing. We were like, we were like, we were like, one day I was in the village, a monkey come out. I look at him, he challenged me. I hang him up like Jesus Christ for all the monkeys to see. The monkeys, the monkeys never come back to the village. Oh my god. You just, you just doing... Amazing, Zach. One day, I was digging a pit in the village when a big fucking monkey walked in from the wood. We see a monkey try to fly a kite from up above the tree. We throw it straight at the monkey. The monkey come down. The monkey never come into the village. <laughs> they threw a monkey right on the kite. <laughs> can you tell? Can you tell the? Uh, can, wait. Can, can you tell the Jesus story, but with the Jesse Ventura accent? Oh, I haven't done my Jesse Ventura accent in a while. What the fuck is that? One day, basically, okay, so I was, I was sitting there, and a monkey just happened to walk in, probably from the Bilderberg group. Those guys are always up to something, trying to steal our guns. And a monkey walked right in, and I started beating him with a gun, because I'm allowed to have my rights. And the monkey died, of course. Do Ali Jones. <laughs> That's not. A, I said, do Alex Jones not a car starting? <laughs> Actually, it's really accurate. That's all he does. My throat hurts. That was that was awesome. That was amazing. One day, I was in the village when a big fucking monkey. <laughs> the, club, the funny thing is, like, we, we came, I don't know. We, like, we the conclusion that was funny because the, the only thing that happens basically a monkey comes to the village. This guy like, kills. I always it. imagine this That's, like happy, playful monkey just like yeah. dan dancing into the this village. Big smiling monkey and he just kills with a stick. <laughs> Cory called the caveman to form monkey with a stick. No, <laughs> monkeys are funny. 
Oh God, but jo John, holy shit, John, John can do this perfect like Middle Eastern accent and he, he was fucking slaying me. That's awesome. We just kept doing this shit where it was like... <laughs> We'll say we'll say we'll say that for the we'll for, say for the J John John will, John will do the fucking monkey thing when I'm sure when he's here again. I'm excited for that. Why don't we um, try to get him out here? Uh, he's in LA for a couple weeks. We can have him when the day he comes back. We can have him. Do you think if a zoo were to host some like human-made hybrid animals? That animal rights activists would come out and try to oh, yeah. definitely like if they if they if they were to be like the Andrewthals if they but, somehow. Then why aren't they fucking protesting shit now at zoos? Or do they? They are. I saw a protest. I saw like, a like protest during <laughs> the zoo. Yeah. And if seriously, I don't, I don't really protest a lot of that kind of stuff. I, you know, I'm not a vegetarian or anything. I'm not. Right. Yeah, you know, you know, animal cruelty is not good, but I, I'm not really an activist or anything. But I think zoos are probably it just kind of weirds me out. Zoos like, are not I, a good idea. I don't think. I think about like Tumblr and like some of the things that have come up in terms of like you know being Bullshit. important social issues. Yeah. Like uh, I couldn't make my gender. Uh, rock type or whatever yeah. shit like that. Not yet, no, not yet. But like all of a sudden, the, but then like things like zoos, they're like right there in the middle of the city, yeah. and it's like such in the, in the heart of the city. These monkeys are the big fucking cement cage. They're like they're like sitting in piles of poop. Yeah, There's zookeepers dropping cinder blocks from twenty feet up onto their heads <laughs> <laughs> and beating them with sticks. Yeah, yeah. and it's like. It just, it, I don't know, it just surprises me that these people who have no problem, like, speaking out about things, I, I don't know, it just seems like that would be such a much, that, I, that's, a, that's an obvious visual, like, I don't know, in some cases a travesty I've always, when you see these sad animals. I've always thought that the people who are, like, who feel really, really oppressed because fictional characters dress the way they don't like them to dress, yeah. I, they feel more oppressed yeah. with that. yeah. Than like a woman in Afghanistan who who yeah. leaves the faith and gets killed. Yeah, they feel way more, which is baffling to me. Yeah, and I know it's not like, oh, there can't be different problems to worry about. But if you're worrying about a fictional, the way a fictional character yeah. dresses, you don't have any problems anymore. Yeah, that's it. If you're if you're down to that, if that's the big issue of the yeah. day, you're good. You know what's so funny? You're good, I promise you, you're good. What's interesting to me is, like, the, a, a lot of those opinions and, like, how strongly people feel about it. I wonder, like, in five, six years, when they look back at themselves, do they think, like, wow, <laughs> I was a dummy. You know what I mean? Because, like... But, but I, I feel like some people grow out of it. I think it's a phase. I think... I think that kind of group of people really thrives off the younger people who are like 14, 15, 16 who are really yeah. trying to find themselves. Right. Maybe try to find their sexuality. No, and I, That's why I understand a lot of how who, it happens at that phase of your and life. I, so I, I would say maybe, but I feel like maybe that also maybe these people can grow to be adults who end up pushing it further. I don't know. Probably a little bit of both. Hope, hopefully a, a, a chunk of people grow, grow out of it, I think. I, I hope. What's really weird is I, you see, like communism is a big thing on Tumblr. They really, really, I've seen like posts of the same people who do the same thing because they really think communism is like. But that's such a high school thing. It is a high school. That, that was all such it a, is. like the the principle of like, oh yeah, yeah, everyone's equal and we all exactly. Do the thing. And everyone's like this pure. Is, yeah. But then you want to shake him and go, "You're a fucking idiot." Yeah. There has not been one. Scenario where communism you yielded anything won. but you fucking can't. corruption and nope. death. <laughs> not one communist country. I mean, no. even a place like China is not really communist anymore. Place it's like, not. They're they're really pseudo communist. They're yeah, a lot they're, more. They're communist in, in yeah, just name pretty much. Yeah. At this point, they're pretty much. And and I, I do think at times they use the communism when they need to like when they need strong or something. Yeah. yeah, when they need to make something happen. But for the most part. They've been very good about look. If they were truly this quote unquote communist nation, they we they would have never lent America money. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. that that no, would it, not be the case. They're, they're not. They're not. My, my 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 point is like it's that weird phase of like yeah. I want to be a communist. Like, there was like anarchists too who were like yeah fuck me. You know, there yeah. was a point where everyone on fucking Reddit and Tumblr were like, "Look how cool Vladimir Putin is! He's like riding horses and shit." And then like, like, do you remember people were? Yeah, obsessed no, no, he was with a huge man. Everyone yeah. was like, "He's awesome!" He's oh, awesome. and they had like all these pictures with him with his shirt off and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then like he gets people to take of him like fighting bears and shit. It's fucking. Yeah. It's honestly Hitler level stuff. And I don't, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not doing that because I know that's really like the an easy run. I'm not saying he's like Hitler. I'm saying. Like Hitler never uh, like wanted himself to take pictures with his hands in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Really, 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 really cared about his image. And a lot of most leaders, all, all leaders, do care about that. But Putin was like a different level of like propaganda, where it's like 
him with his shirt off, him with a you know a yeah, big fish. Yeah, flying plane, him. Yeah, 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 yeah Bombing yeah. bears, karate, in the ocean. and so forth. Yeah, seriously. He's <laughs> playing bombing bears. It's a whole different level. Than like, a, when, when, have you heard about that thing where world leaders want to have their arm facing the camera when they take when they do a handshake? Oh, there's really weird levels of that. So that makes sense, but then Putin's on a different level, I think. Yeah. Compared to what other people have. So what would you think of Obama in terms of his... Uh, what, what do you think his concerns about public image are? Uh, Look cool, baby. I, yeah, I think that's about it. I feel I feel like he wants to appeal to the youth, and I think, honestly, he's done a really good job with that. He's appeared on a lot of talk shows. He's done... Mm-hmm. He's on Kimmel and stuff. He's on... You know, he's on, he was on Between Two Ferns. He was mm-hmm. on uh, BuzzFeed, I think, recently. Yeah. Every, every time it's for... To plug the healthcare thing. But he, I mean, sure. he's done a good job with that. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. As far as that goes, I, I wish he was like doing his job and not like on TV doing all these YouTube I, videos. <laughs> I, 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 I think I think recently I think recently it's in his last I think I think I think he realizes his last two years he doesn't really have to win another election so he's doing a little bit more stuff. Yeah. The Cuba thing, I'm glad uh, cut this. Up. Uh, this is I would cut all this out because this is political shit. Nobody wants to hear about this. Mm. I'm glad I'm glad with the Cuba thing. I think he's done good with that. Uh, the Iran deal for now is probably gonna fall apart though. Yeah, they seemed like they were actually on board, which was a surprise. I think I think his foreign policy stuff, and I think he's he's made some. I think I think he's made some big decisions incorrectly, but he's also made recently. I think he's made some good ones. That's very interesting, Zach. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, now, Zach. Let's get to another question. I'm just curious. There are a few in here that are that are kind of softballs that I think would be kind of fun to answer. Um, I don't know how you guys are gonna answer this one though. Who's your favorite superhero? This is a question asked by Caleb. Do you guys have a favorite superhero? Not really. Hmm. I'm the trying end. to think. Probably just Batman. I'm fucking stereotypical. I like Batman. Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, you know. know what? I, I do like Spider-Man a lot. Me too. Spider-Man, there you go. Do you think... So, so you know how there's kind of like this hatred for Superman because he's got all the powers. He's like a five-year-old. I'm, I'm kind of part of that. Right. I, don't, I don't like Superman. I understand. But do you think it'll ever come back? Like, do you think it'll ever they circle have, they back? Have, you know, they, have, they they did something really cool with him in that game, Injustice, where they made him the bad guy, and it was the best idea ever. How was he a bad guy? He uh, he sees Lois Lane get killed by the Joker, and he just fucking loses it and becomes like Hitler of the world and takes over. And I, then he's like killing off any superheroes that oppose him, and it was a fucking amazing idea. That's he, great because he's yeah. overpowered and yeah. Not, yeah, I think I think if you do things like that, it's interesting. But yeah, it's that, just like when you overpower the villain, it's always cool. Yeah. Well, then it makes sense when you need everybody to band against them. Yeah. yeah. That's the only time I've ever liked him was in that game, because he's a dick. I think like, I think that's the most interesting way to go with Superman is that he becomes an asshole. He kind of he gets cocky. That's, that's an interesting way to do it. Because, it makes more sense too. He came from another planet. He comes to Earth. Yeah, and he's he's fucking invincible and to he's everybody invincible. on Earth. Yeah. yeah. I never really liked it. Yeah, that is interesting. That he is, as far as like villains are concerned, like the fact that he has one weakness. Yeah. But all the strengths. He Every is strength. actually set up to be more of yeah, yeah, exactly. a villain. I never even thought of it that That'd way. That'd be a good movie idea to play with. I don't, I don't think they should even... honestly make a movie of Infamous. I don't, I don't... Or no, wait, no, Injustice, not Infamous. I don't think any, I don't think any Superman movie's done that, tackled that aspect of it. But... That struggle between you. But then I'm also curious, like... Spider-Man 3 tried to do that. Oh, uh, that movie yeah. sucks! Did you did you ever see um did did you see those old Superman cartoons? Yeah, those are awesome. Where he was in Japan and he was beating up all the Japanese people oh, during World War II. Like the 40s? No, but if you if you were seeing and the he's like throwing one. tanks around and there's like the big buck tooth Japanese ones that are like oh I saw from <laughs> They all actually talk like that too. Yeah, they do. Did you, did you and they it? have the big buck teeth and the really slanted eyes. Yeah, but you're talking about hats. Superman as a villain. I'm sure. They know, may have you know. a Japanese version of Superman where it's like super evil American man, you know. Did you ever see the Popeye one? Uh, You're a sap, Mr. Jap? What? That's a real thing, I swear to God. It's pretty funny. You're I'm a sorry. sap, Mr. Jap. It's like Popeye, he's like, hey, David, can you look at these yeah. you guys? <laughs> and then you would say the same thing, it's like, oh, hello! And they, they, give him like, they give him like a peace treaty, he's like, oh, I'm, a, I'm a peace of a guy myself. And he starts saying it, and they fucking like knock him by the head and shit, it's the funniest thing ever. For all, for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> World War II propaganda is seriously one of the funniest things because they just didn't give a shit. Yeah. They didn't fucking care. That's wild. That's true. All There, there was like, you know, because they were, you know, with Pearl Harbor and everything else, it's like, Yeah, you that, know. they were the only country at that point to attack the U.S. Yeah. Ever. And at that point, you're, you better be ready for yeah. some... Yeah. It's interesting, though. I don't feel like you could ever have that happen nowadays. Like, even if... We kind of do. And, and like, not on a government level, but we definitely have it on a personal level. Like, I think, like... Well, I'm just saying... A lot, you... a lot of Americans hate Russians now. There's a lot of, like, 
fuck Putin. You know, that is a lot of like fuck America stuff in Russia. It's really weird. Right. I, I think I read a poll that the tensions between the U.S. and Russia, between the populations, it's the biggest mistrust since like the 80s, since the Cold War. Sure. So that, that's always weird to me when you see that. But do you think if something happened in America now, like if there was some like major conflict with another country and we made some cartoons or major studio released cartoons or whatever that straight out did stereotypes and made fun of them, that that, that would actually get published? Because I feel be, like there's so be, much dissension within the hard, country. It would be hard to differentiate people, between on an individual level and a, and a you know, uh, yeah. systematic level. Because, for example, 9-11, a lot of like South Park did the episode of Bin Laden that could be perceived as insensitive in like 50 years sure like because he's like oh you know he looks like this or whatever right but it it made sense to them so it'd be weird like oh, in 50 years people could say oh Comedy Central must have funded that by the government it's like no even Disney did those fucking propaganda videos so exactly yeah. what I'm talking about yeah yeah Disney Warner Brothers yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, I mean I, I definitely think on an individual level like if the US got attacked again or there was another terrorist attack. Or but even during 9-11, there were so many people within America that were like, yeah, we deserved it. Uh, That's most, what I mean. It's most of like, those people got <clears throat> shot. Most people got, most people were booed. And there's some truth to that, but not... I went to NYU, dude. It was a very liberal school. I had tons of, not only students, but we had some teachers who were like, well, we were kind of asking for it, guys. Uh, really? And it was like, you know, so I, I just feel like nowadays there's so much, um, people want to... I mean, it's guised as not compassion, but like uh, empathy. I, I don't know what it's guised as, but whatever the fuck it is. Tolerance? Yeah, it's guised as tolerance, but it ends up becoming intolerance to the other end of the that, spectrum. It's like, mm. I, I, okay, it's remember, really weird as a fucking dirty liberal myself. It's weird to see liberals be so afraid to, to touch Muslims at all. Extremist Muslims, okay. they're fr terrified. But they'll gladly shit on a Christian. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's funny, to, everyone does it. It's like, oh, you fucking stupid Christians believe your yep. God ate eggs or whatever, fuck yep. you, whatever. Yep. Oh, what are you stupid, you got crucified, you faggot. Yep. But it's like, nobody... I mean, God, nobody's going to touch his law. So, so, uh, so Be, beyond that, joking. So, who's um, our uh, Anita Sarkeesian's kind of little puppet guy? What's his name? Uh, fucking John McIntosh, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, John McIntosh, or whatever his name is, uh, and when um, the, the French cartoon artist died. Oh, don't even. Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah. I was so. So, it's like, like here it was, like this time to, you know, not just mourn, but celebrate the work of this person and... and His artists, yeah. Right, and the fact that he was not going to be bullied by... He was going to have his own opinions, you know. He was going to speak out about things that... If you watch, if you look at his cartoons, they were actually very... You know, I think they were fair in a lot of the assessments they made. Yeah. Obviously, it's a cartoon, so you're making fun of shit. But the fact that his death then became a Twitter point for them to say, yeah. oh yeah, what was it, JC Charlie yeah. means white lives matter? Yeah. Uh, it was like, what fucking, that is that is so liberal, it's like in its own, it's like. But what's weird is they, they have no problem doing it to everybody else. I don't, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. And it's like I said, it's coming from somebody who is a fucking self-proclaimed asshole. Evil. Blows, yeah, it, it is, it, it goes from like, it, it just boggles logic, and it's just so far out there, and it's so transparently just yeah, evil. I it guess is, I, I would call that evil. That's just that, yeah. That, 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 that's that it's know. taking the death of someone who was and making about them. Yeah, making about them, and this is a person who was about free speech. This is about person, you know, a person who was an artist. You'd think from like a liberal standpoint, like they're kind of a poster child, but no, their death now becomes because they weren't someone from Ferguson or something, and people were upset about it that. Yeah, and that's also to say that nobody was protesting or marching or caring about all the Ferguson shit. That was all over the internet. Yeah. Everyone was a yeah. part of that. Oh, yeah. So the idea that it could tr that they could use that as a bullet point to try to try to equate those in any way, yeah, just tr just shows how absolutely insane that far side of the spectrum is. Yeah. Anyways, I mean, sorry. even that that guy, if I could just say, well, let's see, that guy also weirdly enough has really weird communist ideas. I bet he does. Like he he's he's openly said like, yeah, free 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 speech and free market. It's a terrible idea. Like, what do you want to get to that? Wait. Speech? So wait. What would without free speech then what? I think he, I think he's so far left. He's he's serious level, which is fine. But it's just it's weird to see that idea. What's he's beyond serious. free speech though? Basically, say say what I like and I prove oh, it. Oh, got it. Yeah. No, that Stalin makes sense. Solid shit. Well, that's actually how he works too. Because I. Oh yeah. Because there was a comment made about. Um, what was it? There was there was something about Bloodborne being too violent or something. Really? And it was like, 
Yeah, but I guess Bloodborne's out, but it's okay, cuz games, or whatever he wrote. And I and then somebody made a comment, and I just wrote, in a reply, all I wrote was, I think it's pretty fair to say that uh, that this is clearly a, um, a parody account. Yeah. Instantly blocked. Yeah. Instantly they, they, blocked. They've got weird block bots set up. I'm on you a know blacklist. That? Oh, is there block bots? No, no, no. You got blocked by him, by him. But my point is, I've been blocked by people I've never even seen. I've talked to on Twitter before. I'll click someone's profile who's like a, in that group. I'm already blocked. Like, what? They have block lists. That's how afraid they are. They're cowards. That is... that, And, and then I had a, a little tirade about that. Just about, like, you know, if you're going to sit here on a public platform yeah. and, and spout your opinions at people like it's get goddamn ready, gospel yeah. and you can't handle anyone even having... I didn't even challenge his fucking opinion. What's, it was literally funny, just a joke. What's so fucking ironic and so funny, it's, it's savory. Yeah. They have this, like, we're being put down. We're the minority group. Don't put us down. Yeah. And then if you have any conflicting views, they, they yeah. block you immediately. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. drew a picture of Revolution 60, that Brian Wu game. Mm -hmm. Blocked. Yeah. Just drew a picture of it. Well, Chris... What I was did you listen, draw? Okay, okay. What did you draw? Okay, I exaggerated it a bit. <laughs> I, was, I was blocked by fucking uh, Tim Schafer. All I did was retweet a joke that was like, it was his stupid sock puppet joke that he made that wasn't funny. Yeah, that, you know what? He must have. He started to, he's like, no, somebody did so That what? day, yeah, that ba dee ba dee ba dee ba dee. Yeah. Anyway, he, dude, I could imagine, like, after, if there are block bots or whatever, <laughs> that that alone, when when something like that happens, right? They go, that they the, must, they, they just, like, full force blocking. Overwhelmed. There must have been, like, 30,000, 40,000 <laughs> blocks. More than that. Just, like, blah, blah, just, like, <laughs> blocking everybody. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you wrote anything that had the word sock in it, you were done. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking. It, it's just amazing that these are the people who believe that in some way they don't believe they they, they 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 or at least they appear or at least they say or at least they're putting on the image that they are in some way trying to be harbingers of a better future or of of some kind of cause when the truth they, they, is they, they, they they're little fucking children who have no spines who feel like their opinions are more important than everyone else and yep. anyone with a differing opinion is a brute and a cro-magnum beast yeah and and they just can't handle having any kind of actual discussion about it. I would discussion scary. Yeah, I would. What if somebody has a different opinion? I would fucking love to sit down. You know me, dude. I'm super civil, man. I, I would love to just have an honest debate. I know exactly how some of these conversations would go. I don't know, but I kind of know from dealing with other people yeah. that seem like them that we could have the most. I could go in with the best of intentions. Be as patient as possible, but if I was honest and asked direct questions, that this shit would get so out of hand that yeah. they would be red face flush, flipping table, angry, yeah. and and just be like, you you just don't get it, you know? You oh, fucking you're racist. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I can sense that from Mitch, these you're, you're you're a minority, so you you actually you you overpower their voices. It's funny. But they would say you're like they they would say you're a self-loathing Asian. Yeah, something like that. You got a bar though, Mick. I, I I love my Asian side. When I sign my it custom, totalized racism. You when I go across, say, Ew, yellow smello, yellow smello. I I only said that once, <laughs> and I said it to you when I was pointing at your dirty piss stains. But <laughs> I, I, whenever I come into the country or leave the country or whatever, when I have to fill out the the forms and shit, I always write Asian American. That's I've always done that since I was a kid. It I, that's what. I did, and I never changed it. I mean, now I don't look Asian at all, but when I was a kid, I did. And I was with my Asian family, yeah. so it just made sense that I would do that. Okay. Speaking of, Chris Cuniff. Cuniff? Who the C flip? Cuniffy. Okay. Change your last name. <laughs> Cuniffy? It's pissing everybody off here, as you can tell. You're, like, shaking your head. I've Chris, never... Chris, Chris right now is really heavily, and he has yeah. a red face, and his yeah. tears down his eyes. Yeah. Too. He's turning green. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm really pissed. <laughs> he asks, uh, "Have you ever traveled overseas? If so, where?" Yes, Ireland. Was that it? Just Ireland? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, he stayed at a hotel that was like right next to me. He didn't even say hi to me once. Wait a minute. No. Yeah. You liar. I saw him one day and ran back to my place. <laughs> Slammed the hotel room door and said, Don't come in! Yeah. <laughs> you had both hands on the door, you're breathing heavily. I was like, What? You're so scared. <laughs> no. Sweating. Don't come in, I have a gun! Zach visited me, you visited me twice. 
No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I did. I visited you once. It was not twice. It was once. I visited you. It was just so long. It, it, was, sep- twice. it was September to November 2012. It was too long. It was cool. Dude, was it? Me and Zach, we saw we saw many things. What do you, okay, hold on. Somebody goes to Ireland. Like, you're in Ireland, right, Chris? Yeah. So I'm like, hey, I want to go to Ireland. Yeah. You're like, yeah, come on over. Yeah. What the fuck do we do? What do, what do we do? Okay. And I'm like, hey, I'm coming out to Ireland. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah. And you're like, yeah, I got I got a whole week of shit planned. Let's go. Okay. What's on this list? Okay, uh, that's what. It's exactly what Aaron and Susie did when yes. they visited. So I showed them the quarry in Wexford, which is. So you showed them a big rock hole. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, we showed them Johnstown Castle from the inside. Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z. So you showed them an old rock building. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh huh. Uh, we we showed them the outside of our flat where you can see people fingering each other in the streets. <laughs> That we, actually sounds pretty It's funny. pretty sweet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we went out to my mom and dad's house to play basketball and play cards. All right. That uh, was fun. You didn't take him to the Guinness factory? Oh, we went to Dublin. Um, went to Phoenix Park. Uh, we went on a shitty ghost tour that was horrible. Why was it horrible? Because, okay, this is, wow. Because ghosts never, ain't never, real. Never th- even t- talked about this. Uh, we got on a ghost bus tour where you get onto a spooky bus, right? And it... This is like a big thing to do in Dublin, apparently, but... Just so you know, I'm sorry, ghost bus tour sounds a little bit like ghost... Never mind, I'm gonna cut that out. What are you gonna say? <laughs> it sounds like Ghostbusters! We're like, ghost bus tour! <laughs> We're going on the ghost bus tour! You're leaving that in! No, I'm cutting it. Leave it! Cut it, cut it. Oh, okay, I'll cut I'm it. I'm so bad with these stupid puns. Go on. Okay, I liked it. But, um, okay, so you get on the bus, and they're like, We're gonna bring you to all the ghostly parts of Dublin, okay? So you get on the bus, and, uh, they... They like furnish it from the inside so it looks like a ghost house on the inside of the bus. <laughs> okay. Of a double decker bus. And uh, that's they, kinda fun. They black out the windows mm. and put curtains over it so you, oh. it, it's fucking dark inside. Oh. Okay, and um then then this guy came on or he came up onto the bus, the the tour guide, and he's like, Hello, I'm going to show you around Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we were like, Okay. And then he, 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 okay. How many people were on this tour, by the way? Um, let's say thirty. Oh wow. Okay. So that's a lot. I know. And then, okay. So we get on the bus, and they're like, "We're gonna bring you around, show you the scariest places in Dublin." Ooh. Then they drive you around, and they park outside of hotels where you like look fifty feet across at a building. You're like, "That's where someone died." And you're like, "Okay." <laughs> and then you speed off. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then it's like, and then they brought us to this shitty graveyard with like a bunch of monks died. Here, it's like no shit. Wait, like, there's really dead people in a there's like a, there's there's just dead a bunch people of monks. in my fucking <laughs> everywhere. Go ahead, say, Chris, spill the beans. Okay, finish that thought. There's dead people in your what? Uh, let's move on. So, what happens? Zach made me look like a serial killer. <laughs> no, yeah. but uh, you know, they brought us to a monastery. Chris, I found the duffel bag. You found the duffel bag? I turned it to, pol- to police. Okay. Good. Do you know what's gonna happen to you, you fucking monster? Mm-hmm. Chris, Chris, the autopsy showed her trying to resist. I don't know what you what you did. Listen to me, I don't know what you did, but you're gonna be caught and you're gonna rot in prison, you fucking scumbag. Not if I, I don't ki- know. Not if I kill I don't, you with this I don't chainsaw. Know. I don't know. <laughs> Turn that off. This is serious. This is, to, this is to every viewer. I hope you know the kind of fucking person I live with. <laughs> I hope, Chris, I hope you stay up every night thinking about what you fucking did to ruin that family's life. I didn't. So how was the rest of the tour? What happened? Go on? It was, uh, <laughs> it was fine. I mean, no, it was. It was shit. It's there so were, weird because when I think of Ireland, I do think of castles. I do think of ghosts. My uncle I do works, think of all sorts of spooky ass Celtic spooks. My uncle, like, you know, my uncle works at this really it. cool castle and he, he let us into it. And I'm pretty sure you saw that too, Zach. I did not quit. My uncle's got the castle. Zach. Did you, did, you, did you like Johnstown Castle? <laughs> yeah, it was alright. Okay. See? Do they have the equivalent of like London Tower where like they have like castles with torture chambers? There's a shit? damn goose in the front yard of the castle. That's spooky more than oh, anything. Oh, that's another thing that we did. We uh, we, we looked at Cell Scrabby. That, that's what? just like, what? that's like one minute. Was that anything that no, you it's said? One, it's one minute away from where I used to live in town. And what was it? It was an old kind of a, a castle settlement thing where they had like 
They had, they, they, okay, so this lady was doing a tour, and she was like, Okay, so this is the entrance. Um, when, when Vikings used to run here in here and invade, they used to get pots of fire and pour it on people <laughs> running in. Was she oh. talking like that excited about it? She was delighted. And then <laughs> and, and right, right in that door, there was these like four tiny holes in the wall with bars. But it was like, this is where they put the bad people. <laughs> it's like, sweet, dude. <laughs> Harlan is cool. <laughs> you oh. imagine like the the person before her got fired because it was like you're making this sound too depressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be, yeah. Be we we, we need right. to be a little bit more excited. We have tourists here. I we remember, don't want people to go kill themselves after this. I remember the highlight of their trip to Ireland was when we went to the castle. It was me, Niles, Aaron, Susie, and Barry, and then, and Jack and Patty, and not, we brought a football thing. Yeah. And Niall ran up to the football and he, he tried kicking it at the wall, but he kicked it into his own head. <laughs> he kicked the ball in his own face. How did he do that? <laughs> it was the funniest thing. He's a, he's a real life Charlie Brown. That is gonna say that just like Charlie Brown. <laughs> this is what well, he was also was it he was on your Dark Souls stream or something like that? Didn't he like fucking oh, face plant into the ground? Well, that, was when, that was when we were playing Resident Evil for Chris's uh, channel. He uh, he almost killed himself. <laughs> He literally looked like he walked like a fucking toddler just fell over it. <laughs> well, okay, do you remember when Nal, uh, I don't, uh, is this mean to say when Nal was at his fattest? No, no. he's skinny now. He lost so. 80 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so he, he was, <laughs> he's in good shape He now, was so chunkier, whatever. but yeah. when he was at his chunkiest, he, he was adorable when he fucked up things. So when he fell on that floor, that was yeah. the funniest thing. It was yeah, like, watching, more, more. watching it was like, uh, it was like, uh. Okay, it's f fat people falling over is way funnier than skinny people falling over. Yeah, well, skinny people falling over, you just think of like the Holocaust or something like that. <laughs> uh, Simon Pegg's partner, uh, what's his Nick name? Nick Frost. Yeah, Nick Frost, yeah. He's kind of like a little Nick Frost. So, yeah. when, when I saw that beautiful Nile Murray at his fat Titties, yeah. kicking He's kicking that fucking... ball into his own head. <laughs> that was a good day. Hush, little baby, don't say a word because mama's got to buy you a walking bird. Okay, this is interesting. Bird, don't see. No, no, this is, is, this is from Creeps McPasta. Oh, I oh, like that him. guy. He's yeah. nice. Oh, hey there. <laughs> All right. He knows what I'm talking I about. Didn't see Here's you there. a super creepy, spooky <laughs> question. Uh -oh. Are you ready? Oh, oh. You guys always talk about the strange and dark times in your ah! childhood. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> you always talk about the strange and dark times in your childhood. So, for a change of tone, what is the happiest memory? from your childhood. Oh my god. My father towering over me, screaming, Why Zach, is there blood? Zach. His penis was out. <laughs> His penis. I thought the happiest time was when your dad protected you from the guy by doing a backflip. Yes, that is a real my story. My happiest memory, is, is this happy memories? Yeah, what's the happiest memory from your childhood? Okay, one time I was in the Irish countryside near my grandmother's house, sitting under a beautiful apple tree. And the sun was shining down, beating down on the tree. Shut the fuck up! Uh, no, this is serious. I was in the shade. It was f perfect day. Yeah, yeah. When a actual horse walked up to me, and it, being under an apple tree, I grabbed yeah. the apple and I fed it to the horse. He ran away into the sunset, and it was the nicest moment I've ever seen. Are you being serious? That is true. He's like, he's like before. I oh first, my god! He's being him, serious. When I first met him, but that's you know, a beautiful story. One Chris. day when I was about the horse 12, looked back and went. Ah! <laughs> he ran away. One, one, one day when I was 12, I was laying on the grass under an apple tree. And I looked down and went, ah! No, no, no. no that's not true. It was very similar to yours, but not, not directly yours. Okay. I picked up a fucking fat worm from the ground. <laughs> I, I, I held it up to the sky and said, Hello, hello. A big hawk came down, picked it up. It grabbed me by the hand. And he flew me over the earth and showed me it. And he put me back down. <laughs> Zach, do you want to do an, an eagle improv? Okay. Okay, Mick, do you want to take part in our eagle improv? Sure. Okay, uh, I'll start the story and Zach will go and you go, okay? Alright. Okay, uh, uh, Mick is sitting in the sitting room when a, a giant American bald eagle smashes through the window with a small jewel in his talon. He opens his talon to give the jewel. Mick grabs the jewel with his big fucking crypt keeper hand. He looks at it and hisses, Yes! <laughs> He then grabs the eagle by its head. Why are you speaking third person? It's you. I swing the eagle by its neck like a lasso over my head and fling it into the sky while grabbing its leg 
it then pulls me up into the outer stratosphere. <laughs> Mick grabs the small jewel in his hand. Yes. He's nearing the sun. <laughs> he throws the jewel. It beats towards the sun with a thriving force. With small chunks breaking off now. Mick wakes up. He's shaking in his bed. <laughs> his cock is limp with his dry jizz. I must have passed out. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> the end. <laughs> There was no conclusion. It's not the end. Mick wakes up again. <laughs> oh, no. He wakes up again, except this time he's standing over Zach's dead body. He wakes up again. Which he's is also alive. caked in jizz. Zach wakes up and then he realizes it was all a dream and he no, killed No, then Mick woke no. up after that. And, no. And Chris no. and Mick, Mick wakes have their up. dicks in Zix, Zach's eyes. What? Eye Mick. <laughs> the eagle wakes up. Ooh. The eagle screams. That was awful. <laughs> yeah, let's go. That was Eagle Improv Hour. There you go. That's the Eagle Improv. Eagle Improv. No, I, I wake up again. Zach's <laughs> fucking blood and cum crust into a, a small little stone. It becomes Which alive. I then... That was the jewel. It was the jewel. It was the jewel all along. That's not... I wrapped it all up. You can't make okay, a jewel out of one. I wrapped, I wrapped it all up. Let's do another one. <laughs> You want to do an improv? Mario is sitting on his bed eating a slice of pizza and getting fucking pizza grease all over himself. Luigi walks in and says... <laughs> Luigi walks in and says... He says, what are you doing, you fucking no, fat piece of shit? you can't steal my improv. Come he on. Says, okay, let's do, let's do an impro actual improv. Uh, we didn't finish Mario. I'm Mario, you're Luigi. I'm you, Luigi. You're, to you're Princess Toad. You're Princess Toad. <laughs> Princess Toad boy. Okay, you're Mario. Oh, this pizza! I like the flavor, the different flavors. Papa Mario, John's, get, get, come on now. Papa John's, Stop. Papa John's never fails to deliver on their on their delicious pizza deals. Go to PapaJohns.com right now. The pop will give you a free drink <laughs> and extra extra chicken poppers if you order a free pizza right now. <laughs> the end. It's over. Uh, That's it. <laughs> <laughs> My ear popped from laughing. <laughs> Let's answer another question. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck were you talking about? Your favorite childhood memory oh. was fucking. Oh yeah, how the fuck did we get eagles? Talking to horses and eating out. Oh, I did. I survived eagles. Why did I do that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Favorite childhood memory? I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot we were on that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, going camping with my with my family. Uh, really? When you yeah. were a kid, you liked that? You weren't like, yeah. wow, the no, ground's I hard. It. No, I loved it. Um, huh. Kind of like going to like a ball game or something. I don't know. Uh, I remember when I was seven. Uh, I just I just got in first grade. My mom brought me. Uh, uh, she, she she went to went to school, at McDonald's, which you know you you, you know you, you, she never did that before, but came to school. I was like, I have a surprise for you. Came out like brought me out to a car. We got a puppy. He showed the puppy, and it was fucking. It was my dog, and she was like eating the, the little dog was eating the fucking back seat belt. Aww. Yeah, so that's cute. You put it down. Yeah, we, we fucking stepped on his head until it died. I see. <laughs> no, but uh, I don't know. I was like seven, and my mom gave me McDonald's and showed me a puppy beagle. Oh, so that was a fun memory. That's cute. Had yeah. a puppy beagle. When I was a kid, my grandma used to. At the end of the day, she worked two jobs. She'd take me to school. Then she'd go work her two jobs, come back, cook meals, and uh, take care of everything around the house. My mom was in college and working at the time. And uh, so my grandma did everything. But at the end of the day, she would sit in like this tiny little... She was a midget, dude. She had to actually have like a little like... Um, it wasn't even a cushion. It was like a straight up like... It almost looked like a footstool that she put on top of the car seat just so she could hmm. see over the wheel um, so of this God. Oldsmobile. <clears throat> anyway, so she had this tiny little rocking chair. And um, she, at the end of the day, would read her newspaper, and I would play with Legos. Uh, so we'd be in the same room, and I always asked her, like, when she was going to go read her newspaper, so I could go into her room and just build Legos, like, while she was, you know, reading her newspaper. Yeah. Um, but I also did this thing when I was a kid. This is when I was very young, like, three or four. I didn't know at the time what I was doing, but I, I would always play with Legos on my stomach. You know what I mean? So like I'm lying on my stomach yeah, and I'm okay. playing like, oh, I on see, the floor. I, I thought you made you build shit on your stomach. No, 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 not on my back. stomach. I may have done that too though. But no, I'm lying on my stomach on the floor Yeah. and I was building Legos, but I would always wear like sweatpants before I went to bed. And I remember I'd always like kind of like rub my pelvis against the ground. You'd like, fuck the ground? While I was playing with Legos. Mm. And I realized now 
that what I was doing was I was at a very even an early age I was jacking off. You were fucking it. I was like, yeah, I was like whatever. And my grandma would always get so mad at me when I did it and I didn't understand why. But she'd always be like, Ay it's like you're always like wriggling around on the ground. Did she know what you were doing? But I think she knew what I was doing, so she was like trying not to be like don't jack off. Yeah, don't jack That's off. That's really weird. Okay, <laughs> wait. Sorry. Uh, no, but that was that was, that was still like one of the best memories I have of my childhood. Can, can I tell you something weird that like I've always, I've had this fucking memory in my head my whole life, and I like always forget to tell it. Is it real? Yeah, no, it's oh, real. Yeah, okay. Is that it's like the same thing? When I was younger, I have a very vivid memory of sitting in my grandmother's kitchen with my uncle, my granddad, my grandma, my mom, and my dad. Yeah. And I was playing. Jacking I was off. no. I was I was rubbing my dick through my pants, like yeah. like pretty hard just like rubbing my dick yeah and ev i just remember everyone in the room saying chris you have to stop doing that like you have to like it's yeah but no one was telling you what you were doing they were just like oh stop just stop no, but no, they were like chris you're not supposed to be doing that it's like this very dirty oh. behavior how old were you fucking three or four yeah but 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 i just remember just being like but i like the way it feels and they're just like no chris it doesn't matter you have to stop doing that but i just always just touch my dick in public like constantly do you I, now no i i oh. i, I, I Touch my balls a lot with real without realizing. You were just you were kind of realize you were yeah. your pants. You know what though? I went through a phase where I was like really against touching my my junk like in public. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just because I don't know what happened, but I <laughs> kind of like stopped caring about. It. Like I went through a phase where like I didn't want to do it. Like I knew it was wrong and embarrassing. But now it's like if I gotta adjust my shit, I'm gonna mm. adjust my shit. How, I'll wash how my old hands, were you? How old were you when you figured out the waistband trick? Oh god! What was your first fifteen? Yeah, 15, I was not 14. subtle at all until I was like thirteen or fourteen. I used to get erections like in class, yeah. and then the bell would ring. And I was like, I have to walk to the next class, so I had to do one of two things. It took you that long to figure out you could just like well, you can't listen. flip your dick up into your into your shirt while you're in class. You can't if you're stealthy. You, yeah. I, I learned how to do it, but my point is, mm. my point is, there's two things I would do if I had an erection, I had to walk to a different class. Yeah. One, I would like p try to put books or a bag like, yeah, in front of me, of course. but if that didn't work too, I would just put both of my hands in my pockets and lift my yeah, pockets yeah, 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 up. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't fool you because I just looked like I had an erection and I was also walking like an idiot. Yeah, like your three <laughs> it didn't thumbs. Fool, it didn't fool one yeah. fucking person. <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, no, the waistband trick is good. The only problem, though, is like we had, I, I did the waistband trick in high school a long time ago. Um, and this is, you know, in high school, you're raging. Like your boners are bigger oh, than Oh, it's ready to fucking pop. It's like they hurt. They, yeah. they it's, like, yeah. it's like purple and it hurts. Yeah, it's, oh Anyways, God. I just remember I had one one time and I did put it in my waistband. And, it, and I don't know if the waistband was like almost like a rubber band where it was like pinching it so it wouldn't go down. Like it just stayed hard for yeah. a while through like part of the day. Luckily, there's a point where it's like 60% instead of 100 and you can kind of push it back down. Yeah, but this was and staying, just, for some just, reason it was staying around like the 80, 90 oh my size. God. So then eventually what happened, I do remember this. We were in the cafeteria and we were waiting around and um, a friend came up and he was just like hey what's up and, and it was very casual it wasn't like one of those high fives like yay like you know like the end of a cartoon or some <laughs> shit yeah this was straight up just like oh hey what's up man and so i went up to give him a high five now, don't say in in malaysia we all have shorts and we oh, have don't say it and man. we have uh, short oh. sleeve shirts oh no but i was oh. you know this is you know i was kind of uh, i was a little bigger at the time, so like everything's a little tight. I just remember going to give him a high five. Oh, don't say it. And I could straight up see the head of my, cause like when I lifted <laughs> my arm, my shirt kind of came up a little bit. Yeah. And you could straight up see just like the little head like poking over the fucking thing. Did he thing. see it? Um, no, it wasn't mentioned. But I know- <laughs> He saw it. No. He totally saw your no. dick. It, when we, I just remember when I did the high five, cause I wasn't even really looking in his eyes. It was just like a really casual, like, oh, hey, what's up? So I was just kind of like looking down when I high-fived him and I remember like as soon as that happened my shirt came up and I could see my dick hole just staring right up at me and I was like, all right, and he never said anything. No one said anything. No one saw anything. One person caught No that. one saw one. anything. Me. I saw it. The end. <laughs> That's a huge fear of mine. Or like, or your pants are going to fall down and the boners are going to pop out. It's yeah, a too. but now that I'm get now that I'm older, I'm like, I wouldn't mind if someone's, you know what I mean? It's like, if you want to see it, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Do you guys remember when you were younger and uh, you touched the, like the tip of your dick and you'd be like, oh, I can't, I can't, it's too much. Oh, you mean like the, the sensitivity of yeah. it? Do you remember that? Or is, your, I, is yours still like that? Because mine's sure not anymore. No, mine's definitely not anymore. I can slap it around. I mean, it's covered I in calluses. Fucking, I can punch I scabs. Could, I could so. drop a cinder block <laughs> yeah. onto my tip and blow it up. <laughs> I think, yeah, you just spend so much time with it, you're so used to it. But I think back then, especially... 
Yeah. I was getting boners all the time when I was a kid. I remember that. Like it was, I could get a boner doing anything, watching anything, hearing anything. I still get yeah. boners doing anything. Really? I still, if I see like one tit, that's it. I'm yeah, no, up. no. So, sometimes, really? sometimes yeah. if I don't jack off for like a day, and I'm like on the subway or I'm walking somewhere, and I see like a, like a billboard of a girl, I'm like I need to jack off, and he's doing it. Just <laughs> it's weird, like you know. What switches that off? Yeah, if 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 I like, if you're watching, I can sit in my room for four days straight, and if I don't see a tit, I'll be like, okay, I'm good. But then the second, the second I see a tit, no, I'm you talking, just come. Wait, do you mean a, like uh, a, yeah. a bare, you mean like a bare breast? Yeah. No, if I see if I see a girl, like you know, if I if I do it for a day, I'm like, oh, look at that, I need to jack off. <laughs> what if this is what if Chris, to... what if Chris got out of the shower and it was really steamy, so it was kind of hard to see, and yeah. you just saw his butt. You saw my curves. Yeah. Would you Would you think you get horny? Did you, have a, did you have a hot girl butt? Yeah. He kind of does. I do. Bit. I got a big fat ass. No, I don't ass. think so. I might feel really conflicted and then want to kill myself for a day and then I just jack off the next day and try to forget it. When I was on the school <laughs> tour in France and, and in high school, I was walking up the steps and some guy behind me was like, Chris, you've got a nice girl ass. You do kind of have a girl butt. I was like, thanks. I didn't well want, then. I don't want to talk to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't either. Zach, you got a little boy butt. I, I have a flat ass. I have a white boy ass. You've got a dog ass. You've got like shoulder he blades. He has no butt You've got, cheeks. Like, shoulder blades his for an butt, ass. His butthole just the like podcast. sticks out. Stop the podcast right now. This is not a joke. <laughs> You've got two baby fingers you for know, an we've ass. Been, we've been doing this for so long and it's been fun, but I. Are you going? I, Are you done? Oh, the poor baby. Have you ever stuck your dick in a vacuum hose? I tried once when I was a kid. Did you really? Yeah. While it was going? I, okay, this is what happened. I saw it in the movie. Yeah, that's what I... So everyone's seen it like in a movie mm -hmm. or something. I saw it in the movie, I went to put my dick in it, and it didn't feel good to begin with, so I didn't turn it on. I did date a girl very... Sh I didn't date her. I hooked up with a girl a long time ago who... Uh, I guess didn't quite understand the principles of a blowjob, <laughs> um, yeah. and uh, well, initially, the, it's actually kind of got a little bit of a backstory only because so we were at a party, everyone was hanging out, and we ended up hooking up. This is after I lost some the weight. Farty party, yeah, yeah. And um, she, uh, I farted on her, and then she was like, "Yeah, let's do it." Yeah. So um, we we went in, we were making out, we were doing. This, she was like grabbing my stuff, and and I was. You know, touching her boobs. Back then, touching boobs was such a big deal. Now it's kind of like, <laughs> eh. It's I, like, I, I they're like, there. I, I still like them a lot. No, no, they're they're really pretty, and I, I think they're beautiful. And I, you know, if a girl, but from my experience, so many girls have been like, like if you suck on her tit or something, she's kind of like, <laughs> eh, like yeah. whatever. Like they don't really seem to fucking care the, at all. Okay, the uh, I've had one girl in my life who <laughs> genuinely didn't care and it really made me sad yeah what are you talking about well, well no when you, girl, like if you're stuck on a titty really and the girl just doesn't respond it's just like i don't feel anything then it kind of ruins it i've gotten that more than once and then, then eventually i just kind of gave up i was like well i thought i was sucking this because you enjoyed it yeah and like you know it really just ruined my, my day anyway so we were hooking up and she was grabbing my junk and i was touching her booby and, uh, nice, dude. Yeah. That's up. And then eventually, um, the pants came off, and she did this thing where she was like licking, licking it, like from the side. Like, I thought it was very erotic at first, where she was like kind of licking the sides of it, and then she started blowing on it. Now I don't know if you know this. Wait. But if you, <clears throat> no, a literally, job does not consist of. I understand. Blowing. I understand. Wait, really? And so. <laughs> So essentially, I don't know if you guys can imagine this, but when she was licking it, it got very wet, yeah? But yeah. then she blew on it, which made it very cold. It dry probably at some point? Yeah, well, it didn't It didn't go on that long. But it, I just remember it being so cold. Like, it was all <laughs> wet, and then she's like... <laughs> and I was like, what? what? Is I, going? I, I, how old was she? Um, this was when we were 16. So maybe she, I'm not, even, I'm not even trying to be funny, maybe she literally thought a blowjob was like consistent so with blowing then, out a dick. Well, no, I didn't say anything to her at that point because <laughs> I didn't want to be like, I mean, look, there was something happening. You didn't want to be like, you're, look, you're an idiot. Yeah, stop doing that. Do yeah. this other thing. Yeah. Because the alternative is what? Like, no, nothing? stop blowing on it. Yeah, like, stick the whole thing in your mouth. Like, yeah. I, and at that point, I don't want to be like, but I was, whatever. Yeah, yeah. At the time, I was just like, okay, whatever. Something. Yeah, yeah. it was something. Yeah. So anyways, um, I did ask her to stop, and then we, we kind of finished making out. And, and we kind of hooked up a couple more times after that. Um, 
and I think she figured it out eventually because that wasn't the case the next time. But I had heard from somebody else that she had asked about it before. Like she told her friend like, yeah, we did this thing and it was, it was kind of weird. Um, and it didn't seem like he liked it. And then she had explained that the first time she did think that it was sucking a dick, but apparently she sucked it so hard. It was like, apparently. So then that's why she thought she wasn't supposed to do it like that because it was almost like she was trying to suck the thing inside out. Like, you know, like there's, it's not like you're actually like, like a vacuum sucking, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not that. No, and so just... I think that was what she did the first time. And it was almost like, like pulling the fucking inside of his dick Ugh. out through the dick hole. I mean, that didn't happen, but that's what it hurt. <laughs> so then the next time she did it. Oh, she was literally, she was so inhaling I, the I, dick. I, I don't even think it was inhaling. I think it was all just mouth suction pump itch. Yeah. Cool, dude. Um, but then the next time she did it was with me, apparently. So she had just been starting to do it. But I mean, she caught on very quickly, but uh, yeah, when we talk about the vacuum thing, I never stuck it in a vacuum, but my assumption is that that's what it kind of felt like. If you don't have a ton of experience, and everyone's different on like how much like friction or how much you know tension they want. Yeah. Like some people, I've seen guys that are literally like you know tug it, you know like smack the shit out of it. Can I say? Yeah. Do you ever get the feeling with your with a girl and she she starts jerking off? You're like, let me let me show you how it's done. You ever kind of get there? You're like, no, no, no. no let but me the show exact you. same thing goes with girls. Yeah. You're sitting there with your fingers just like, kind of yeah, like yeah, fiddling yeah, yeah. around, and they're like. Just chill out. Just, just sit, sit just, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I'll do it. And it's weird because when girls do it, they always do it just like on the top part. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they're doing it just right at the very tippy top. But whenever you talk about like quote unquote fingering girls, you know, guys are trying to fucking sh like karate <laughs> chop the insides yeah, of them. Yeah. Like just like, call, 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 call. And it's like, well, clearly one feels better than the other. Yeah. So it's like, why would you even. Just you, tell me what to you, do. You, you, you finger the top to make her come, you see? Fast. Yeah. But the inside feels better overall. No, you stick your dick there, and then you f you can finger the Look, top part. One time I had sex. Yeah. The yeah. end. It was yeah. good. That's it. <laughs> With a gorilla who came into your village. Brutus. It turned out it was a fucking monkey. <laughs> I hit the monkey with a stick. The monkey scream. I keep hitting him. His eye come out. I scream too. I put the stick in his brain. I twist. The monkey fall over. He died. <laughs> The monkey never come back. And that was the first time Chris had sex. And it took this fuck to me. Yeah, I just stood in the tree. <laughs> I walk into the village. The monkey village. I find the oldest monkey. I fuck it and show my dominance. <laughs> the monkey never fuck with me again. <laughs> Zach, we should just ship you off to Africa. I know, that's a flip. You'd be a tribal lord. Yeah. yeah. You, you, do you, you think, like, soon, <laughs> like, some doctor will discover, like, a hormone to make you grow hair all over your body, like Sasquatch, and he'll do it to himself, and then he'll live in the woods, so people think he's Sasquatch? You do mean like, McLauer? Like, uh, I'm pretty much, I'm covered in hair. If I didn't shave every day, I would be a werewolf. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, Sasquatch level. There is actually a thing that does that. Have you seen it? The have you, the yeah. circus guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the hair goes all the way here. up to pretty much their eyeballs. Really? Yeah. yeah you never saw it before? No. It's there were a whole bunch of brothers. There's a, It was like in Mexico or something. We can Google pictures later, but yeah. it's a real thing. It's a genetic... It's some genetic thing, but like... All, but it literally grows all and it's, over And it's like face. very cur kind of curly and, and dense, too. It's not good uh, hair. Yeah, it's, it's not... Really and it's not like... It's not like a Sasquatch, like... Long, flowy, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's like this, like very it's like tight, a it's not like a Jewish QB hair. shit. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an afro over your whole body. Yeah. Cool, dude. I don't know. Those. I mean, they're in the circus. Maybe they like that. I wonder if girls like that. You know what? I I saw a fact. This is an actual f biological fact that men have body hair to attract mates. You know what's fucking bullshit? What? Girls, girls who are like I like bald guys. It's like fuck like, you, no, Zach. No, 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 I'm serious. I'm fuck serious. You. I'm serious. No, 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 no. Shut up! Let me, I want to hear it. Let me explain. <laughs> Look, everybody, everybody here is baldy, all right? Let me, let me explain. I am the only one that's bald. Give me five years. I'll be bald and ugly. The point Give is, two. girls, no. when, whenever people see like a guy with a comb over, it's like, oh, just shave it off. It just be bald. Bald can look good. It's like dude, no. Dude, shave. Dude, comb it's like, it's like gross. It's you should shave it off if you got a comb over. Exactly. But my point is. They're like girls fight guys with shaved heads attractive. It's the same girls who are like, same people who are like, yeah, I, I like nerdy guys. Like you like a, you like Bruce Willis and fucking Vin Diesel, you right. idiot. You, yeah. you if you see a, a lumpy fucking doughy guy and he shaves his head, he just looks like he has cancer now. Yeah. Don't fucking lie to guys. Please be honest. Yeah. 
That's what I, I can't. I can't stand when I see that. I like guys with shaved heads. Own it. It's like no, they can all be dumpy and have acne and now be bald too. Yeah. You fucking liar. I think when girls say they like hairy guys too, I don't think they mean. I think they mean like they got a hairy chest. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's like and I like they've it. got like this like you know this very kind of picture perfect like they they, they they want they want hair. like they want like Hugh Jackman. Yeah, and it's like Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't want a hairy guys. You want fucking Hugh Jackman. You the liar. real hairy guys are the ones with like these straggly patches of fucking yeah, alfalfa fucking, sprouts yeah. on their shoulders, like me. And that is what it actually looks like when you. Look, if you're gonna say you like equality, say you be honest. All yeah. right, guys, don't. What, what, is there equivalent for guys to do that? I don't think guys really do that. No. I mean, oh well, hold on. Guys will say they like. Guys like I girls with small boobs. Some or, guys or, like or say big that. boobs or whatever. Or I guess. big boobs. Yeah, okay, I guess we do do that. We're all pieces of shit. And, then, and, like, and that's not always the case. It's like you say you like a girl with small boobs, but. She's got a. You really just want like fucking uh, nice looking titties. What's that chick who? Uh, you know what? They're not Hollywood big boobs. They're like yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So when you say small, I mean, sometimes you'll see like the twelve year old boobs, and you're like, oh, oh yeah, clearly that's not what you're looking for. Some people have that. Yeah. So you can't just be like, oh yeah, I like small boobs. Look, all I'm saying is if you're gonna be honest. I'm saying I love it was an inside job, but the reptoids did it. <laughs> Reptoid, Reptoid, where oh where is Reptoid? <laughs> I wish there was a series about Reptoid. All of Reptoid's adventures. Besides 9-11, what else I, did I, I think, do? I think I prefer what else did Reptoid do? I, th I feel like rep Reptoid is a way funnier word than Reptilian. It's just such a stupid word. <laughs> do you think there's aliens among us, Zach? No. Not no. not at all? I don't think we've ever made contact. Among us? I don't think we've ever made contact. Yeah. I don't. But I could be wrong. I feel like it would be a lot more like uh, War of the Worlds, where like if we made contact, like if they came to Earth, there would instantaneously be a huge outbreak either for them or for us. It would really yeah. suck if like, like there would be a microbe yeah. that we were carrying that would either wipe them out instantly or wipe us out. A good movie would be like if, <laughs> if aliens came like a big warship, but they were peaceful, but they landed in like Iraq or something. Oh God, that'd be a sweet oh, movie. God. This comes from Angus T. Jones. All right, Angus. Angus. What do you guys think of my hit show, Two and a Half Men? Uh, Angus, is this really you? Is it the real? I, I I wouldn't be surprised. It's the real Angus T. Jones, you guys. Fuck you, Angus. <laughs> You're no fan of us. Fuck off. What's the deal with the Big Bang Theory? How is that still a show? I've seen clips of it, and it's absolutely the worst fucking thing it's, I've ever seen. Honestly, all it is is it's parents thinking that nerds are stupid and and weird because. But there's a lot of young people that like it. I really don't think there is. There, there, I hear there about are, there are, but it's also people who, it's people who don't understand nerd culture at all. That's yeah, what I think really, but they're the ones say, look. I've ner seen a ton ner of young people say they love Big Bang Theory, nerds. and they also claim to be self-proclaimed nerds. They're not. They're they, not. They, they want oh, to be. It's, I see. it's them. It's them trying to live like vicariously through that show. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, I'm nerdy. It's like you're not. You're really not. It's like, yeah, I, I play the Legend of Zelda. It's like, wow, look at you. Wow, good for you. Wow. And it's, it is mostly moms who who are like, my son's like that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's also parents wanting to feel connected to their kids. Really? If you wanted to feel connected to your kid. Kill it. Go in his room and you, you suck his dick, dude. <laughs> yeah, instant you. connection. What else am I going to tell you? What, what else is a boy going to want? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that show is honestly one of the worst I've ever seen. I just, I, you know, and I'm not trying to be like a hater. It's just, and maybe honestly, because I haven't actually sat through a full episode. So that, that, I'm speaking from a very, you know, sheltered place here. But the clips that I see as like highlights, like sometimes I'll see them on Twitter or I'll see like something. Yeah. There is nothing that is I've ever seen a clip from that show that it, I was ever like, wow, that's even remotely funny. No, it's, it's just it it. I, I really like. In fact, it's quite opposite most of the time. Yeah. It, it feels very you, you, cringy you, you, and you forced. See, you see the uh, the the Big Bang Theory without like a laugh track, right? Where they just kind of cut out those, and it's just really, really uncomfortable. No, I haven't. It's well, that's funny. any show. If you take away the laugh track, like the timing gets fucked up. And no, shit. I feel no, no. But 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 I mean, like then you get to really see the jokes, and then you then you can like yeah, that's with, fine. With something like Friends or like Seinfeld, you're like, oh, okay, without the laugh track, it's uncomfortable, but you can still see how the jokes work a little bit. Yeah. Whatever, but with that show, it's like, oh wow, this is actually nothing. Like the jokes are like, I want to play Super Mario uh, Bros. There's like a laugh track, and you're like. What? Why did? Why, yeah. did, why is that? Because everyone laughs after. So there's everything. a laugh track for that show. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like it's shot like in front of a live studio oh, audience. Not. No, it's not. So why the fuck is there a laugh track? Oh, because that happens to a lot of shows now. Yeah, really? there's a lot of shows like that. Yeah. Like what? 
I don't watch a lot of TV. There's a lot of shows like uh, I, I'm pre like loads of old sitcoms do it. Uh, Friends wasn't shot in front of a live studio. Audience. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. Friends. Um, I thought it was. I don't think I thought so. Friends, Seinfeld. Really? Um, Frasier. I thought. I know. I know. Fresh Prince was because they had that one joke. Yeah, Fresh where, Prince. Fresh Prince because they had that one joke where they, it was really weird, like a fourth wall joke where they Will Smith like runs off the stage and runs through the audience. It was really bizarre. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought a bunch of those <laughs> were shot stupid. before a live studio I mean, it was, audience. It was very stupid. I think I think that, that, that seriously like a night. But, but you know, know what? Even if Friends wasn't though, it... but even if Friends wasn't, the way it's shot, yeah, yeah looks no, they, like they're it's trying to of... emulate it. Basically. Yeah. And well, they're trying to get that episode. Right, but this show, the this other one, doesn't look like it's... Two and a half men, too, is not shot for like... Yeah, do you ever see, uh, I think it's How I Met Your Mother? Do you ever see the compilation yeah. where it's like, the the laugh track, they, they repeat the same laugh track? Oh, really? Where it's like, they say a joke, and they hear one guy going, Ha, ha, ha! And then they, <laughs> then they did it again yes. and again. Ha, ha, ha! <laughs> what, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> that guy fucked it up! Yeah, like, if he wasn't in the laugh track, you wouldn't be able to you tell. You wouldn't be able to tell. It's fucked Funny, I think though. what they do is that they, they get like a group of people into a studio and just have them laugh and cry and boo and stuff yeah, and yeah. just use that. Yeah, but I'm saying with this other show, The Big Bang Theory, it's shot like oh, yeah. a modern they, show. They stopped. They stopped. <sighs> they stopped. I think I think live studio audiences stopped being a thing in the 80s, in like 90s. The even. purpose of a laugh track most of the time is to make the viewer feel like he's part of the it's laugh. It's okay to laugh. Yeah. yeah. It's seriously like if you're seeing stand up in your laugh. room compared to if you're in a theater or something, yeah. it feel, it's a way different feeling. Because you have other people yeah. happy with you. It's also like watching a comedy with friends or with by yourself, right? Or even like a movie theater. Is, if you want to go that simple, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's way. It's usually those experiences are better because you tend to laugh yeah. with the audience. I feel like the actual theater, like Broadway, is a much better example of that yeah. kind of infectious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah you, exactly. you, you wouldn't clap maybe, but like all of a sudden, four other people are clapping yeah, over there, and then and everyone then, starts clapping, yeah, 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 or yeah. the yeah. standing, and, yeah, the, and yeah, then yeah. the laughing and shit. Yeah, we did that when we saw fucking the. Uh, it was Chris and I saw Les Mis in New York. Yeah. They had this thing. There was like, the the ending of it was like a weird, it was like a standing ovation for like 10 minutes. And then the fucking actors came out, uh, like the Les Mis actors came out and they were like, help us fight AIDS. And we were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently they never do that. They're like, help us fight AIDS. AIDS kills people because it's AIDS. If you buy this AIDS poster, it's like, what the f It was really weird. Yeah, they, yeah. Like, they like ruined the complete, the, the atmosphere was gone. It's a noble. No, it was cause, like I get it. It was, it was, but it's it was, the same it was, thing. It was, it was jarring. As it's all. the same thing as putting someone at the end of a fucking cashier. It's like they're they're helping you, so you pay yeah. them. It's like just don't do that. I'll donate if I want. Make yeah. make it aware some different way. I hate that shit. Yeah. Like I saw Lee Miz. I wanted to yeah. fucking feel like Lee Miz coming out of it, not fucking fight AIDS. It is interesting that that's like the last taste. Yeah, you exactly. Have. Exactly. It's like you ate this beautiful cake, and at the very end, there's like fucking. Penny, yeah, you know, and you're like sucking on a penny at the yeah. end of it. And you're like, eh. they should have done that before the show, really. Yeah, yeah, that would have been perfect. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, uh, AIDS is bad. Stop AIDS by stop fucking. Join the AIDS. revolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vive la you no know, AIDS. whatever, and then they go into <laughs> yeah. the show and it kind of they can kind of work it in. Yeah, I yeah. can't believe they did that. That's too bad. I'm glad we didn't pay three hundred bucks for it. What? Oh, that's true, dude. All we, those we shows bought, cost we so bought like much. thirty whatever dollar tickets. And we all sat. We had really. Like shitty edge seats. Yeah. But like during the intermission, everyone left. No, no, no. Oh. But in the middle, like the best seats in the house for like three hundred, four hundred dollars seats. The top three rows were completely vacant. Yeah. And we were like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> it was too. It was too like clean cut and surgical for yeah. that to be like a group of people. Yeah. So we we kind of made our way over there and sat down, and these two girls walked over, when like whenever was, everybody was coming back from the intermission, and they're like, did 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 you buy? Yeah. Did, did you pay for these seats? And I was like. Uh, no. And she was like, "Okay, that's not good." And she, so I, they're like, but it was funny. Yeah. So like, by the time the intermission was over, like thirty or twenty like, people <laughs> had done. We did like a, a bunch of other people were fucking criminals like us. And yeah. We just decided to, <laughs> but we it was a great show from the intermission onwards. It was a good show before that too. Yeah, but that yeah, was yeah. a really you know. Before we fucking moved, there was these fat bitches who wouldn't shut the fuck up. There was these drug girls at a fucking Broadway show. They're like, oh, oh my god, look at that. And the, there's a part, <laughs> there's a part where at the beginning where Valjean like rips his fucking jacket off and he's yeah. this big butt or his yeah. vest off and he's a big buff dude and the girl went eh! she started kicking her legs it was like a, I was like Ugh. yeah and whenever, oh like she was like like she was excited her pants. yeah like, like I, she was all like, yeah I felt liquid juicing up, like, up. Yeah, whenever yeah, 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 there was, was fucking um, music lift playing they started there, doing yeah. like conductor like gestures yeah they're like doing obnoxious con con uh, conductor I gestures I on them wow they <laughs> see they seemed like they seem like a, a like a parody of audience yeah, people. Yeah, no. 
You paid to go see a Broadway show. Yeah. Like, I and ruined it for other people. What I yeah. think happened was, because that doesn't happen that often, a fucking Broadway show. Yeah. I think what happened was they bought like cheap tickets like we did. Yeah. Which they did. And then they got they got excited before they went and got drunk. Yeah. At, like some bar or something. And then they came and they were too drunk or something. I squealed on them, Mick. What you did you did. say? I was a dirty little squealer. I ran out while they were being complete stupid bitches. Chris, what happened was, it was one of those weird things where, even without Chris saying anything, I knew what he did because he got through <laughs> it. He, I, I was like, I think I, I think he said you go to the bathroom. I think he even said that. Yeah. He was going to the bathroom, but I didn't see him come back. Like, And while Chris was still gone, one of the guys, the people that had walked over yeah. and was like, excuse me, could you please shut the fuck up? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever, he, whatever he said. And they're like, okay. And he just said, he stood there for like, a good five or ten minutes just watching him. Yeah. And that made me really comfortable. But he ended up leaving. Chris came back. Did was, they go back to their shenanigans? Uh, no, they stopped. And I was, okay. I was just like, I knew Chris fucking did that. <laughs> I fucking knew it. And after the show, he was like, yeah, he schooled on him. And I was like, I fucking knew it. I knew you did it. <laughs> well, like, I didn't want to sit there and, and also, have them ruin the entire thing. In the animation, yeah. I was like, Chris, those, those girls, uh, some guy came over and told me quiet. He was like, really? He was trying to, he was trying to acknowledge you a lot. Like, you didn't I was going to tell you. I just wanted to see. <laughs> I just thought it was funny, though. It's yeah. true, though. Those experiences, you know, for some people, they, they can only afford to go to, like, you know, Man, one I Broadway show. It was, like, the one show I've ever it's wanted to see. It's a Broadway yeah. show. It's Miz. Shut I've up. Been, I've, I've been, me and Zach have been obsessing over it over, like, last year, and yeah. we were finally going to see it, and then these stupid fat cunts walk in and ruin it. <laughs> I honestly hope they die! <laughs> I hope they die in the real world. Oh. oh. The good news is... Chris, uh, Chris, play us out with, uh... With, Chris, uh, Chris, yeah, Chris, Randy play, Newman. play us out. Randy Newman. Okay. Don't want to start, I'm going to start. You are a friend in me. What about you? You got a friend in me. Red the monkey. Come from the village. I mean, the man, the head. 